end-all, be-all event. With only days left to save. For the best selection, visit your local Ford store today. The greatest enemy mankind will ever face has arrived. Oh, my God. Richard Dean Anderson, Stargate SG-1. Today at 4 on Fox Chicago. 49ers history has produced some classic moments. Back to throw Montana. Stepped up throws. Touchdown! Last week, a new chapter was written. Young almost falls down. Throws to the end zone. Oh, and, oh, and, oh, and, oh. The Falcons' legacy is a work in progress. A team record 14 wins this season sets the stage, and a victory today would send the Falcons soaring to never-before-reached heights, the NFC Championship game. Expected to be noisy today as the Atlanta Falcons, in their first home playoff game in 18 years, take on the San Francisco 49ers in the third meeting between these teams in the NFC Divisional Playoff. And welcome to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton along with Matt Millen. And the burning question for the 49ers, unquestionably, after their dramatic victory against the Packers last Sunday, a short week for them, having to come east, and having to play the Falcons, who have rested, have a bye, playing indoors on artificial turf. How do you size it up? Dick, I don't think there's any question that emotion has a lot to do with it because it's draining. And it's not the physical part, although that's a big part of it. As a matter of fact, in talking to Steve Mariucci this week, he said it was the quietest the plane has ever been. And when he walked around to see what was going on, he didn't see the usual, you know, guys slapping around each other. He found him sleeping, so he knows it's a tired team. He gave them off Friday. He needs fresh legs and a quick start if he's going to win today. And, Matt, the one thing that the 49ers are banking on is momentum from that Packer victory because they have the experience in these kinds of games. But in watching the Falcons in practice, they showed a confidence that belied the fact that they haven't been here in a while. Confident because they know they've beaten them once before. Rested, ready to go. In fact, talking to their coaching staff, they said Tuesday it was so physical we had to slow them down. We couldn't let them leave their game on the practice field. Today's game, when they're on, Jamal Anderson, the running, and then the play action. And if they're going to win, Jamal Anderson will have a major impact on the game. So the Falcons at 14 and 2, having a franchise year, take on the 49ers in the NFC Divisional Playoff, coming right up from the Georgia Dome here in Atlanta. May I take your order, please? Excuse me? He said he wants chili. When it's cold, nothing but a hot bowl of Wendy's rich and meaty chili will do, so we keep it simmering all day long. And it's just 99 cents on our super value menu. Uh, chili. Uh, no. Baked potato. Uh, or warm up with a 99 cent sour cream and chive baked potato, slow baked in an oven. Chili. No, baked potato. No, it's caramel star. Wendy's 99 cent super value menu, 10 delicious choices every day. On January 15th... Something came onto the ship. From the producer of T2 and Aliens... What the hell is that? Oh! It's a life form, unlike anything we know. ...comes a new form... Oh, my God. ...of terror. Go, go! Let's go! That thing wants something from us. It wants us for spare points. <laughs> Virus Rated R. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Step up. Learn to see farther. Learn there are teachers who won't allow you to fail. Learn to dance, to draw. Learn that the real challenge doesn't come from the outside, but from within. And that there's more to you than you ever knew. Be all you can be. Start looking forward.
heard something. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Back at the Georgia Dome, 71,000 fans, a sellout, and right now on the field, Jamal Anderson, the Falcons' great running back with Pam Oliver. Pam? All right, thanks a lot, Dick. Uh, Jamal, we both live here, and this town has gone crazy. How exciting is this moment for this team and the fans? It's a great time, it's a great time for all of us. Uh, we're really excited about being in a situation, hosting a playoff game. Uh, the Dome is electric. The guys are really, really fired up. Happy to have everybody back. Uh, Coach Reeves being back here and a common opponent like the Niners. What more can you ask for? All right, go get him. Let's go back upstairs to Dick. All right, and it'll be a while, Pam, before Jamal Anderson gets to handle the ball as the 49ers have won the toss. There is Dan Reeves back on the sidelines less than four weeks after heart bypass surgery. And Steve Mariucci, who we understand has received a contract extension for a couple of years. And that could be a big burden off of his shoulders coming off the big victory over Green Bay. Morton Anderson will kick off for the Falcons and the rookie R.W. McQuarters is back deep to return. A good kick by Anderson, and it'll be down in the end zone for a touchback. So the 49ers, and Matt talked about their desire to get off to a quick start. Steve Young, 8 and 5, his career record in the playoffs, including the win last week. The offensive line coming off a fine showing with Deese, Brown, Dolman, Gogan, and Kirk Strafford, the right tackle. Garrison Hurst and Mark Edwards in the backfield. Jerry Rice and Terrell Owens getting the start today at wide receiver, and why not? And Greg Clark, the threat in the red zone, the starting tight end. And the first play is Garrison Hurst, and he spins his way up, and a good gain of about seven. Chuck oh, hey, Smith making the tackle. I don't like the way Garrison Hurst is laying on the ground. In fact, they're stopping it right now. Here Hurst is the is defensive down. lineup uh, up front, and we're going to take a look, and apparently Hurst is injured as you look at the Atlanta line linebackers and defensive backs you know that Hurst with a minute to go found out that his uh, hamstring tightened up against the Packers and he is hurt now that is not the way for a fast start for San Francisco and even forget the fast starts he is a major part of their offense Chuck, Chuck Smith just kind of grabs him at the top and spins him around right there. Oh, yeah, don't even show that again. I can't look at it. Garrison Hurst uh, suffered the hamstring pull at the final regular season game and uh, played and had a big game against the Packers last week, gaining 128 yards before it tightened up in the last minute of that wild card game. And he was ruled all right to play. And here on the first play from scrimmage, Hurst is shaken up. And we'll take an injury timeout and return to Atlanta in just a moment. All right, Captain, we're going to have a coin toss now. If there's any team, we'll call it in the air. Um, we want a good, clean game. Um, we're all professionals here. Does anyone have change for a dollar? What? Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. For only $99 or less, you can fly coast to coast when you purchase by January 19th and travel January 5th through June 3rd. Now that is a sweet investment. You have a retirement plan? Oh, sure. Invest, get rich, retire at 45. Well, I'm 58. Huh? Oh, your retirement plan. Who's looking out for your investments? E-Trade, the number one rated place to invest online. With free real-time quotes, 10 times more research, smart alerts, all from $14.95. Isn't it time you looked out for number one? Call 1-800-E-Trade-1 and see why someday we'll all invest this way. The new Dodge wanted to take the sport utility concept to a higher level. Enter Durango. It's best in class power, cargo space, and seating for up to eight raise the bar considerably. As to its strongest in class frame and its stable, longer, wider stance. Dodge Durango, a higher form of sport utility from top to bottom. Durango, new ground for the new Dodge. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. 
Back here at the Georgia Dome, and uh, Garrison Hurst has been helped on the card and will be taken off. And uh, this is a huge blow to the 49ers on the first play from scrimmage. You can watch Chuck Smith just spin around. His foot got caught. And yeah, it's a big blow to the 49ers, but you know, you hate to see anybody, anybody get hurt in this game. And you know it's always a possibility on any given play. And the Atlanta fans are giving uh, Garrison Hurst, who hails from Lincolnton, Georgia, and led that high school to the state championship when he played here before moving on to the University of Georgia, a standing ovation as he leaves. And he is replaced by Terry Kirby, who has played very well at running back. They'll lose something, but Terry Kirby will give them a different kind of dimension. And they'll have to play differently with Kirby than they did with Hurst. Gain of seven on that play by Hurst, second down and three, and Kirby charging forward, close to the first down, and the ball is knocked free, and the play made by Jesse Tuggle, the middle linebacker. So, Dick, what happens with Terry Kirby in the game, they become more of a straight-ahead running team. He catches the ball well out of the backfield. They'll still run the same offense, but you won't get the same bounce out with speed that Garrison Hurst gives you. So you lose one one small ability for a big play out of your running game. Third down and one at the 29. And here is the fullback Mark Edwards, and the Falcons stop him on third down and short. Mark Edwards, who was a hero last week on the final drive, when he got loose from Butler and got a first down, and the Falcons' defense holds. Did we talked about getting off to a fast start. One way to do it is up front. Watch Travis Hall come through Jesse Tuggle. Excellent job of meeting it right in the hole. This is all set up because of Travis Hall taking everybody inside. Gogan's forced to come down. Tuggle reads it perfectly and hits him square in the face. And that's as good a start to get a jump start emotionally as you can have. Reggie Roby to kick it away and gets off a of beauty. Tim Dwight, the rookie from Iowa, who has a world of speed on the return, and he is tackled immediately at the 31-yard line by Chuck Levy. Falcons defense does its job, and now they hand the ball over to Chris Chandler in his 11th year, but making his first career playoff appearance. The offensive line, Whitfield, Collins, Tobek, Gene Williams, and rookie Ephraim Salam at right tackle. Jamal Anderson will get a lot of work today. Brian Kozlowski, the fullback. Tony Martin and Terrence Mathis are the wide receivers. A very potent tandem. And an up-and-coming tight end, O.J. Santiago. Chandler, a career year in many categories, starting from the 32. And immediately they go to Jamal Anderson and the 49ers with the flag down. After Anderson picks up about a yard, it was Darnell Walker and Roy Barker in on the tackle. And Jerry Markbright, who's refereeing his last game after a brilliant 25-year career, calls holding. It is against the Falcons. And Robert Tobek, I believe, is the center. And he'll be called for the flag. So the Falcons back to the 22-yard line. It'll be first down and 20. Second down and long as a gain of only two on that play. Defensively for the 49ers, Dolman, Junior Bryant, Gabe Wilkins, and Roy Barker, but we'll be seeing a lot of Charles Haley. Ken Norton, Jr., win for Tubbs, returns at middle linebacker, and Lee Woodall is the other backer. Marquez Pope and Darnell Walker are the cornerbacks, Merton Hanks and Tim McDonald, the safeties. It'll be second down and 18 now for the Falcons. Dolman had 15 sacks during the regular season. Second and 18. 
Chandler again looking for a receiver and the pass overthrown intended for Terrence Mathis. And right now, let's send you down to Pam Oliver. Pam. All right, Dick, word on Garrison Hurst is this. It is not his hamstring. It's his ankle. They've taken him in for x-rays. We don't have any information on if he will return for the game. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you very much. So uh, Hurst taken off on a card after the first play from scrimmage. Terry Kirby replacing him. But now the Falcons face a third and 18. And, and just who walks into the game, you can hear the shark. Dun, 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 dun. Charles Haley's checked in on that right side. And Whitfield is there to try to block him. Third down and 18, and Chandler's pass. It's caught by Terrence Mathis, but short of the first down by about a yard and a half. Antonio Langham, Nickelback, who started the year at cornerback for the 49ers, making the stop. So the Falcons will have to kick. One thing that Chris Collinsworth talked about in the pregame show, which I think is a major point. When you're coming off of a short week and you're having to travel, you have to simplify everything. Not only offensively, but defensively as well. And I believe sometimes that's the best thing that could happen. Dan Straczynski will kick it in R.W. McQuarters with a fair catch. And he makes the fair catch at the 18-yard line. That was a 42-yard punt by Straczynski. Each team has had the ball once, no score early here in the first quarter, and we'll be right back. Hello, welcome to Dodge Durango 101. Today, I'll be covering the 5.2 and 5.9 liter Magnum V8 vis-a-vis -vis Durango superiority in the class structure of domestic compact sport utility vehicles. You're not listening. You're just staring at the Durango, aren't you? Aren't you? Why do I even bother? I don't know. I'm just standing up here like a big doofus. Neil, did you eat your chunky soup? Huh? Neil, did you eat your chunky soup? Yeah, man. Chunky sirloin burger with loads of vegetables and lots of beefy sirloin burgers grilled to perfection. Neil, did you eat your chunky soup? Why do you keep saying that? Mama. Gotta make sure you eat. <laughs> Campbell's Chunky Sirloin Burger. It's loaded with beef. Pro football is a game of unabashed joy. Fasten your seatbelts. This could be the start of something new. It's heavenly. It's wonderful. than Titanic. I'm king of the world! <laughs> More powerful than Twister. Oh my god, run for your last! Straight from the mouth of Eddie Murphy. Ah, you son of a... The PJs. Series preview tomorrow after The Simpsons on Fox. I feel like a man again, with my dignity back. Brian Young, the defensive tackle who broke his leg on November 30th against the Giants. And the 49ers miss his push up the middle. On first down from the 18, the pass caught by J.J. Stokes and a gain of seven. And to echo what we were talking about in the pregame show, special teams are a major part of it. Elijah Williams has a plan, and it's to use his speed to get outside. The 49ers, Lance Schulters, and Chuck Levy have their own plan as well, and that's to meet speed with speed and then get physical. That special teams, a big part of the game, as Terry Bradshaw predicted. Second down and three at the 25. And here is Kirby, nowhere to go. And Kirby is stopped quickly. Henri Crockett. And this is a swarming, very quick, hard-driving defense. The Falcons doing an excellent job of taking some shots. You're going to watch right here. They're going to take their shot inside. They're effectively going to give you one extra man. Come inside with the blitz. William White is unaccounted for. They clog everything to the inside. Crockett's able to come from the outside. Really what it gets down to, Dick, it's a matter of numbers. If you have four guys blocking, we bring five. Terrell Owens has come in as the third wide receiver on third and five. 
pressure on Young has to get rid of it, and it's knocked away by Buchanan. Beautiful job by Ray Buchanan. Intended for Jerry Rice, and Buchanan will be shadowing Jerry Rice all afternoon. They, they took Ray Buchanan and put him on Jerry Rice the last two times they played them. Here he is working inside. The advantage he has here is seeing the receiver and the ball. And so once he sees the break, it's all about reaction and breaking on the football. Buchanan played it perfectly. Jerry Rice, who caught only one pass against Green Bay, and that was a controversial one at that, so Reggie Roby will be kicking from the six-yard line. Gets off a of beauty. Tim Dwight back on the 26. Dwight turns the corner. Tim Dwight. And he gets into 49er territory. A return of 36 yards by the rookie from Iowa with James Williams bringing him down. Nick, he also did something important. Look at the crowd. He's got them in the game, something they needed very dearly. tradition since 1876. Think about that. That's more than 120 years ago that this company started making Budweiser under Adolphus Bush. The family has always put in the forefront, protect the excellence of the product Budweiser. And I think he would be very happy that the generations of his family have practiced what he taught us. Just a reminder that with options like traction control, anti-lock brakes, and all-wheel drive, Dodge Caravan is good on ice, and snow, and slush, and rain, and mud, and dirt, and... Now get a thousand cash allowance or 1.9 financing on Caravan. You can own the Dallas Cowboys, because Jerry Jones is giving up the boys for a day. Congratulations. You'll fly to Dallas, check out a game from the owner's box, tour the field, and meet the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. It's easy to enter. Just log on to foxsports.com. Then catch the Fox Super Bowl pregame show between 11 and 2 Eastern to find out how you can own the Cowboys for a day. How do you know when your Vegas vacation's gone too far? I'm Mrs. Homer Simpson. The Simpsons, an all-new episode at 8, 7 central tomorrow. That 36-yard punt return by Tim Dwight is the longest punt return of the year for the Falcons. And a team playoff record. So the Falcons start from the 49er 38-yard line in a scoreless game with nine and a half to go in the first quarter. delay here is Jamal Anderson very strong and Anderson driving Darnell Walker back about six yards gets the first down inside the 25 and a gain of 14 what so many people forget about Jamal Anderson is his great vision he has the feet he has the power he runs with a good shoulder and a good lean but I want you to watch inside see this is all about eyes let him see things here now it's not there you bounce it back out now watch the lean finish the run Watch the pad level. Watch how it gets under. And then he just runs right through people. Tim McDonald said, you know, when he makes eye contact with you, you know you're in trouble. First down up to 24. Again, they go to Anderson. And this time, a very little for Jamal Anderson. And right now, let's check in with Pam Oliver. Very bad news for the San Francisco 49ers. X-rays have revealed that Garrison Hurst has a broken left fibula. He will not have to go to the hospital, but obviously will not return. Back to you, Dick. That is not the way the 49ers had envisioned to start here after a restful day yesterday. They wanted to jump out quickly on the Falcons, and now they've lost. Yeah, it, looks like, uh, it looks like Steve Mariucci was just getting the information right there. And you're watching... Terry Kirby, it looks like he's got a little bit of hitch in his kid long, too. Second down and eight. And this is the play action pass. And Mark 
Marquez Pope grabbed it, but he was out of bounds. So it'll still be Atlanta ball on a pass that was overthrown intended for Mathis. That's the recipe. Actually, he, he, he threw that ball without really looking. That's, that's not a good job by Chandler. And they need him to play the way he can play from beginning of the game all the way through. He's got to settle himself down because, frankly, he didn't play well the last time they, they played this game here in the Georgia Dome. Made, made a big throw at the end of the game, but they need him consistent from beginning to end. Third down and eight at the 22. They line up with three wide receivers bunched on the right. And here is Chandler. And he's got a wide open Terrence Mathis inside the five yard line. He was wide open, was Mathis. And a first and goal coming up for Atlanta. Dick, you said it right. That's called bunch formation. And that's designed for a reason. They get all three guys here. Now that forces you defensively to back off. And you have to let it develop. And what happened is they picked this up and they left the middle wide open. Mathis just sat down in the hole and waited for everything to develop. He sees it, sits down, first down, big play. And Bob Hallen, a rookie left guard, lining up as a tight end on the left. He's number 64, first and goal from the three. And here is Jamal Anderson, and maybe a yard, that's all, and that will set up second and goal. You know, listening to Howie Long in the pregame show, he was talking about the offensive line coached by Art Shell. And this offensive line is young, and it's not the most talented you're going to see in this league. But what they've done an excellent job with is assignments. And they always get a hat on a hat. They don't necessarily get a big push. They let Jamal Anderson help with that. But they don't, very rarely do you see guys coming clean. Ball is at the two-yard line, second down. Again, they go to Anderson, and he gets in for the touchdown. Spin move by Jamal. Dick, as you watch the dirty bird, that was all on that bird because it was vision and it was the ability to be able to change direction. In fact, there's his mom, Zenobia, and she's got the dirty bird down pat. And she's going to get a football pretty soon because Jamal Anderson, as he did in the Previous game between these teams here at the Georgia Dome presented Zenobia with the football, and he's got it in his hands right now. Tremendous story. Carried the ball more than anyone in NFL history, 410 times. Morton Anderson adds the extra point, and the Falcons jump out on top of the 49ers, 7 to nothing. who have had a lot of their wind out of their sails due to the injury to Hurst. 7 nothing Falcons. Ah, the possibilities Dodge Caravan opens up. It's a cabin in the woods, complete with heated power recliners. It's your own private ski lodge, or your workshop for building one. It's your place in the sun, complete with guest room and breezeway. Dodge Caravan, the world's most popular home away from home. Now get a thousand cash allowance or 1.9 financing on Caravan. It's a little chilly, isn't it, Steve? Oh, sorry. What am I thinking? How's that? Yeah, thank Feel you. Better? Yeah. Good. 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 We were cold. Check. The only thing more important than your favorite receiver is your favorite card. Visa, official card of the NFL. You look great tonight. Thank, thank you. you. It's everywhere you want to be. got in you broke into personnel yeah these are salaries of every person in the company look this senior VP makes about half as much as this senior VP I bet he doesn't know that sure he does I just emailed everybody in the company
This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. By Visa, the preferred card of the NFL and Super Bowl 33. It's everywhere you want to be. By IBM, are you ready for e-business? And by Gillette Mach 3, the first triple blade razor. Jamal Anderson with a two-yard touchdown spin move, giving the Falcons a 7-0 lead. The key play, of course, Tim Dwight's 36-yard punt return into 49er territory. And now Morton Anderson kicking off again. R.W. McQuarters at the six-yard line. McQuarters, the rookie, first-round pick from Oklahoma State, takes it out to the 28. I think we talked about the feet and the bounce, but then watch the vision. He sees it here, and he's just going to bounce back to the outside. Nothing there. Keep your feet moving nice and low. He's in for six. And then when Jamal's running, Mom is praying. See, Mom is only watching. Please, God, give me the touchdown. There we are. That's a thankful Mom. Falcons leading 7 to nothing, Trying to prove they deserve their 14-2 record. Chuck Levy, number 32, is the tailback for the Niners who start from the 28-yard line. And here is Levy. Beautiful play by Archambault. Lester Archambault. They think what they're doing is, is they are beating the 49ers at the line of scrimmage. And you're right about Kirby. He, right. did, he did have a problem, and that's why he's not in the backfield right now. Well, I got news for you. No matter if Garrison Hurst, Terry Kirby, or Chuck Levy's in there, when the defensive front of the Falcons is beating the offensive front of the 49ers, it won't matter who's running. Archambault just blew up the field, took away Scrafford, got penetration, and end of play. And Terry Kirby going into the locker room has an injured left ankle, but it's probable that he'll be back. Second down and 16, and on the screen pass, Mark Edwards. Beautiful back, and he is tackled quickly Andre by Andre Crockett. Crockett. Unbelievable by Crockett. And he saw it developing, Dick, right from the start. He dropped down in his zone and started to see the linemen sneak out. It's Crockett right down here. He's going to come back. He sees things start to develop. Now watch how he's going to avoid Big Ray Brown down the bottom. Dips inside right into Edwards. And that's as much about instinct as it is with field. There it is. It's beautiful. I'll tell you, Matt, right now the Falcons seem to have too much speed for the 49ers on this field on both sides of the ball. Dave Fiore replacing Derek Deese at left tackle. Steve Young pass, and that's caught by Terrell Owens, still fighting for more yardage. And but it shy of the first down by about three yards, and they'll have to kick it away. Yeah, Dick, what they did was perfect. You sit back, you let everything develop in front of you, and once you see it, you attack it. So Reggie Roby on again to kick it away. And Tim Dwight again back deep. Booming kick by Roby. Dwight at the 15. And it's Mark Edwards who wrestles Tim Dwight down before he can get away. 49-yard punt. And only a yard return. The Falcons with the ball and the lead when we come back. On Super Bowl Sunday, you'll discover signs of intelligent life in auto insurance. Be progressive. Call 1-800-AUTO-PRO. And remember... What is Nicorette? Nicotine replacement gum. It helps you stop smoking cigarettes, but you don't chew it like regular gum. You bite Nicorette until it tingles. Then you hold it between your cheek and your gum. And you get a lower level of nicotine to help you fight your cravings. And as your cravings get fewer and fewer, you use less and less and less Nicorette until you use none. And none is a wonderful number. Nicorette gum helps you fight your cravings, your habit, your way. You can do it. Nicorette can help. 
They're not your typical family. You mind cleaning out the shower next time you shave your legs? It's like a carpet in there. It's not your typical comedy. Daddy, you must think I'm the worst daughter ever. Oh, no, you're not, honey. What about that fat girl from The Judge? Introducing Family Guy. Excellent. The mind control device is nearing completion. Stewie, I said no toys at the table. Damn you, vile woman! You've impeded my work since the day I escaped from your wretched womb. Catch a sneak preview of Family Guy right after the Super Bowl on Fox. Wow, you're actually killing me, man. Please. I'm trying to get my game face on. You're up here singing. I believe I can fly. Dan Reeves back on the sideline. And while he was gone and not uh, coaching this team, Rich Brooks, the defensive coordinator, coached the team from upstairs where he is today, assistant head coach and defensive coordinator and the former head man of the St. Louis Rams. Falcons with a lead and a first down on their 16. Tim McDowell walked up for your eight man. In fact, he's coming. And the give is to Jamal Anderson, and Anderson goes nowhere as Lee Woodall, the linebacker, holds him to no gain. Well, tomorrow's divisional playoff game on Fox. Matt matches the Minnesota Vikings 15 and 1 against the Cardinals, who defeated the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. Jake Plummer, an emerging quarterback star, and Randall Cunningham. How do you look at that one? Well, I think you have the big playability of Minnesota. That's been well documented. But the X factor is, is Jake Plummer. Do they have as talented a team? No, I don't believe so. But Plummer can make plays, and they're going to need all of them. Second and ten. Again, Anderson. Very strong legs and try to break the tackle by Winford Tubbs. And held to very little will bring up third down and long. It's a good illustration of what we were talking about earlier with this Atlanta offensive line. They don't they don't blow people off the ball. And but what they do is they stay on you. And you just have to give Jamal Anderson a crap. And then between the push he has and the vision he has, he'll find something. Rushing yards 22 to 1 in favor of the Falcons. Third and nine coming up. a first down as the 49ers had jumped and a gain of 20 yards to Tony Martin who does have playoff experience having played in the Pro Bowl the Super Bowl with the Chargers a couple of years ago that's a nice job of Chandler. offside defensive right in penalty decline first down they of course declined the penalty now watch Chandler it's an excellent job with the hard count and then he got junior Bryant to jump inside and then you have a free play and a great job of the offensive line of giving him the pocket to step up in so he's allowed to see outside and make the throw. Good chance to get back, Robbie, Chris. First down at the 37-yard line. The Falcons leading 7-0, undefeated here at the Georgia Dome this year. Chandler's pass, and it's caught by Terrence Mathis. About a yard short of the first down. And another penalty flag is down, and this call will go against the Falcons. It's at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a hold, and it's going to be taken back again. It'll be first and 20. Holding number 61 offense. And Robbie Tobek called for holding the second time here in this first quarter. And that's the second time, and then it killed him the first time. He's the center right here, Robbie Tobek. Working against Princeton Buckner and then to the left, and that's not so much a hold as it is a nice tackle. Should kind of show up in the tackle stats after the game, which was really <laughs> unnecessary because the guard had picked him up. He just had to pass it. So once again, the Falcons playing with long yardage. First down and 20. Back on the 27. Chandler getting push up the middle and the pass to Jamal Anderson on the middle screen. Anderson getting a good chunk of the yards back, maybe half of them. And finally, Tim McDonald and Lee Woodall bring him down. And when you have a great runner like that, you can open up all aspects of your offense. I don't think the country really knows that much about Jamal Anderson. I agree. I think he's untapped. And I also believe that he's just starting to find his real game. 
and just watching him as he's developed over the last few years, he's doing more this year with movement and making you miss than he has in the previous year. You know, he's gone over 1,000 yards and rushing three straight years. But this was his real breakout season. Second and 10, and uh, about three penalty flags fly. This is, uh, these flags on Atlanta are an indicator that they haven't been here before. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 70. Left tackle Bob Whitfield, the former number one Second down. pick. If you talked about playoff experience and getting in big games and lining up against a guy who's been there before and Charles Haley that all causes a little anxiety the key is once you're there and you settle down you just play your game second and 15 Jerry Rice waiting to get back to work under a half a minute remaining in the first quarter give us to Anderson Jamal Anderson brings it up close to the 40-yard line, and that should be the last play of the first quarter. Winfred Tubbs making the tackle. It'll be a third down and about seven coming up when we start the second quarter. It's a fast first quarter. And it's been the running game for Atlanta. That is the end of the first quarter with the Falcons leading seven to nothing. Where's Frank? It's been his turn for 10 minutes. He had to go call his mother. Hi, Mommy, it's Frank. I tied my bowling shoes all by myself. He must have called her with 1-800-COLLECT. <laughs> why is that? I'll tell you why, better, man, because 1-800-COLLECT's 10 cents a minute every evening. So he usually talks for a while. 10 cents a minute? That's cheap. Hi, Frank. How's your mommy? I don't know. I was talking to Bitterman's sister. 1-800-COLLECT. <laughs> <laughs> Save your mommy money. Control the weather? You should never make angry. The X Files, an all new episode tomorrow on Fox. Do you live, eat, and drink football? Did you get crazy about it? No idea. All Madden fever, catch it. That's the truth. I've had all Madden fever for 16 years, and that man there had all Madden fever so bad they had to put him into the All Madden Hall of Fame. In fact, Charles Haley is the first active Hall of Fame member to be playing. That's why he can practically come off the street at age 35 and uh, contribute in a big game. There's another one who yep. can be on any team, Brian Young. Start of the second quarter, Dick Stockton, Matt Millen, Pam Oliver, third down and seven for the Falcons on the 40-yard line. Pressure coming up the middle, and the pass is caught by Tony Martin, and that'll be a first down right at midfield for the Falcons. Well-timed to Tony Martin, and he and Mathis were one of the more potent tandems in the NFL this year. Watch how he does it, the anatomy of running the route. Drive him, watch his hips. You flip the hips, know where the first down marker is, get there and the ball will be there the ball's thrown before he breaks the key is getting that corners hips turned then you make your break former dolphin and charger there is mathis who began with the jets first down at the 50. jamal anderson and gets maybe two junior bryant in the middle making the tackle for the 49ers yeah, and also tim mcdonald right there Tim McDonald is one of my favorite players in the National Football League. Much like Charles Haley, from the neck up, he's as good as there is. He has kind of assumed the role of what Ronnie Lott was here a few years ago. And watch him. See, this is just instinct. He sees it. He walks up. You have one, two, three, four guys. Now you have your fourth up there. And it becomes a matter of numbers. 
He understands that as well as anyone in the league. Really a fourth linebacker for the 49er defense. Brings up second down and eight. Chris Chandler getting some time, and he drills it. First down, Terrence Mathis inside the 40-yard line. So Mathis and Martin both contributing. Both began their NFL careers as draftees of the New York Jets. Dick, this is against what's called the cover two, when both those safeties are sitting deep. So you have to occupy a safety if you're going to run the in route, which is what they did to Tim McDonald. They occupy him, and then they bring Mathis in back underneath, and the ball's open because there's a lot of pressure on your corner. So by having McDonald play up toward the line, it opens up the passing lanes. Atlanta in a first down shutout thus far. From the 37, they go to Jamal Anderson. Nothing outside. And a second effort by Jamal gets him about four more yards than he deserved. And Darnell Walker finally makes the stop. You know, Dick, there was a recent article in Sports Illustrated about Jamal Anderson. And he kind of came off maybe a little arrogant. And at first sight, you would think that he has that. And he does, because he's been around a lot of big-time people his whole life. The Muhammad Ali's, the Mike Tyson's, the Sugar Ray Lett, all those guys. He's been around, and he understands the mental part of it. But when you get to know him, he's not that way at all. In fact, he's always jiving and kidding and messing with you. Likes to needle people, and he'll take it. Tenth play of the drive. Anderson with 20 more yards rushing than the entire 49er team. But the 49ers defense finally catches up with Chandler and a loss of eight yards. And it was Shane Bottom who was uh, inactive last week, and he gets the sack on Chandler. Yeah, and also Brenston Buckner, but they should turn around and kiss their secondary because there was no place to throw that football. Chandler went back and looked down to his left, and he's waiting for somebody to come clear. And then Buckner was able to come through, and then Bottom finished it off. But it all happens because of the secondary play. And once again, Matt, the 49ers putting the Falcons in uh, long situations. Third down and 17. Chandler under pressure and the pass incomplete. Tony Martin was the intended receiver. So it'll be fourth down and Dan Straczynski comes in and the Falcons will kick it away. Nice job by the San Francisco defense. You know, it's, it's okay to lose sometimes. The, the downs you have to win are right there, that third down. You got to get the ball back. They've not played well through the first quarter in a few minutes. But they're only down by seven, and they're in good shape. No need to do anything other than play your game plan. Terry Kirby is back on the field. R.W. McQuarters calls for the fair catch, and the Falcons try to keep it in play, and they do. Keith Brooking has a phenomenal play. Number one pick from Georgia Tech with a sensational special teams play. And the 49ers will have to begin their next series from their one-yard line. How athletic was that move? the new Silverado. It's bigger. It's more powerful. It's the truck from Chevrolet. Like like well, we're moving on now. We're moving on to the east side. To a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on now. We're moving on to the When you have it your way, it just tastes better. French, German. You're Japanese. the genius behind the new Speak in a Week foreign language CDs. But can you say global distribution? You know linguistics, not logistics. Entree UPS. The same people you rely on here clear customs electronically and deliver to over 200 countries worldwide. Soon orders are rolling in and everyone's speaking your language. Bonjour. 
Machinia more. <laughs> UPS, moving at the speed of business. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Chevy. Mark Edwards on the carry on first down from the one yard line and uh, you could tell by the crowd not much there and uh, Brooking making the big play to uh, force the 49ers to start from the one yard line Terry Kirby who had a problem with his left fibula went to the locker room is back in the lineup for the 49ers but they, they're they they are not one dimensional because the score ha doesn't dictate that but they're at a dimension and a half especially with a banged up Kirby and Garrison Hurst lost for the game and there is Kirby who breaks out and gets to the seven yard line where Michael Booker the cornerback makes the tackle a gain of six yards and it'll be third down Michael Booker a number one pick from Nebraska in his second year starting at cornerback today for the injured Ronnie Bradford I think this game is being dictated by the down four people of the Atlanta Falcons because they in this early part of the game have gotten the better part of the San Francisco offensive line. They've beaten them to the punch more often than not. Third and four. Steve Young backed up and the pass to Terrell Owens and Terrell Owens the hero of last week's wild card game converts the third down the first time the Niners have done it a gain of 19 yards for Owens and the 49ers get out of trouble you saw him being tackled on the other side by by Keith Brooking they're going to give it the look like they're going to be in a zone uh, a man to man with fuller up and then they turned it over into the zone and then it's just a matter of having the time by Steve Young and allowing Owens to run through those zones if he gets matched up on a linebacker that's advantage San Francisco at the 26 yard line Steve Young at living taking off and is hit by Jesse Tuggle and he got got him high and a gain of about three or four yards that time Steve Young is going back looking to his right he's trying to find somebody but it also looks like Steve Young is saying look I don't I don't care which way this game's going if I got to win it with my legs we'll do that when he's good he's decisive Gain 50 yards rushing in the first meeting between these teams in the third game of the season in San Francisco it'll bring up second down and six from the 49ers 30. Flag is down and Young's pass to Jerry Rice and it's caught short of the first down Ray Buchanan put the hit on but there's a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Ray Buchanan is the Falcons Ball start. Number and 76. That'll nullify that completion okay. to Rice. Penalty against San Francisco. Second down. Ray Buchanan's another one I don't think the uh, the country really knows that much about. Ray Buchanan is their A player on defense. They got a couple of B pluses, but he's their A. And and you see what they think of him by the fact that they're matching him up with Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice has been a killer in these games against the Falcons. Oh, he's he's had a career against this Atlanta team. Second and 11, 29 touchdowns, and the pass on the slant complete to Terrell Owens. Owens still driving, and his forward progress will lead him about two yards shy of the first down as Jesse Tuggle and Lester Archambault combine to make the play. I think that is the staple of the 49ers, that play right there. They'll take their tight end as they're going left to right. They'll take the tight end on the left side and run him out. They try to get the linebacker to move, and then they bring their wide receiver, and they come right back and watch. They'll do this, and then come back inside. They're trying to get movement, and this is what they're trying to open up. They've been doing that since Bill Walsh put it in in the late 70s, early 80s. And especially the number 80, Jerry Rice. Third down and one, three wide receivers, and the pass incomplete. Stokes got one hand on it, and there was big time pressure put on by Cornelius Bennett on Steve Young. I think Michael Booker may had one hand on it too on the receiver. That ball was thrown out and Booker is trying Booker's best when he's working up and can get his hands on. You. That's a bad job of not getting his hands on at the line of scrimmage. But I believe he may have gotten see, he's Steve flag. Young saying throw the flag because I believe he may have gotten the other hand on him when the <laughs> ball was being thrown. That's two hands on him. 
Reggie Roby to punt again and Tim Dwight back deep. Roby gets off another beauty and Dwight calling for the fair catch at the 17 yard line. Falcons still leading seven to nothing. When can he come home? I don't know. I miss you. I miss you too. With the exceptional purchase power of Visa Platinum, you can throw caution to the wind and fly across an ocean to be with the one you need. The one you miss. The one you love. Hello? And so can she. I miss you. I miss you too. As often as it takes. Visa Platinum, it's everywhere you want to be. Through to the new world of Mach 3 from Gillette. The first triple blade shaving system. Three blades specially positioned to shave progressively closer. You take one stroke, it takes three. So you don't have to shave the same area over and over, which means less irritation. Three blades, fewer strokes, less irritation. Mach 3 from Gillette. You are my sunshine. Go for it, Ben. Chevy Blazer, a little security in an insecure world. Chevy Blazer, like a rock. Hey, don't go in the water. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Chevy S10, like a rock. By Burger King, where you can have the delicious king of fries. Burger King, when you have it your way, it just tastes better. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by The Thin Red Line, the most anticipated movie of the year. Limited engagements now playing Friday everywhere. 7.35 remaining in the second quarter. The Falcons lead 7-0. That's Dr. Charles Harrison, the Falcons team physician. And there is Dan Reeves. Dr. Harrison not very far from the head coach back on the sidelines today. First down from the 18-yard line. Jamal Anderson following the blocking up front and picking up about six yards on the play. Tubbs and Woodall making the stop after a gain of six. Jamal Anderson is looking for, he's looking for flow. He's going to look for these guys to stream to the football. And then once he sees everybody commit, now he's going to come right back inside. You keep your eyes on a guy like Junior Bryant. Because Junior Bryant is right now probably their best defensive lineman. And as he works down the field and a good job of washing him down, Jamal Anderson will cut back off of him. Second down and four. And here is Jamal Anderson again. And he breaks through. Gets the first down to the 35. Merton Hanks making the tackle. And a gain of 10 yards for Jamal Anderson, who broke from the pack. Now, I want you to watch just what we were talking about. Here, we're going to put it on the clicker. It's a good job. Watch how all these linemen get on somebody. And see, they don't get much of a push, but they have a hat on a hat. And then he has to make a decision of to use his eyes now. Just find the crack and push it. Does an excellent job of using that and pushing the crack. And gets a breather right now after gaining 47 yards and scoring a touchdown and maybe shaken up. Rookie Ken Oxendine, number 33, replaces him. Penalty marker down, and the pass is caught by O.J. Santiago, the tight end who is emerging as an offensive threat. But there are two flags down, and uh, he may be bringing this one back. It's going to be motion against right. Atlanta. But Jamal Anderson now. Uh, obviously uh, not feeling well. Illegal motion. Number 85. And that was the call. Offense. Ryan Kozlowski, who has replaced Bob First Christian, down. is the blocking back for Jamal Anderson. Dick, let me say this about Bob Christian. He, he this year, to me, he was the best fullback in the National Football League. Nobody really knows best, anything about him. Best pure fullback, yes. yes. He blocked well, did everything right. Nobody said a word about him. Uh, this is Jamal Anderson at the end. What's wrong with him is he didn't swallow the ball normally. And see, the wind knocked the out The 49ers tried to shove it right through his stomach instead of swallowing it. See, right? Came right through him. 
Oxendine remains in the game. Rookie from Virginia Tech. First down and 15. Following the five-yard penalty. Chandler going to the air and the screen pass incomplete. Oxendine the intended receiver. And so uh, you know they want to get number 32 back in there as quickly as possible. Falcons have been uh, hurt somewhat by penalties, although they still retain a 7-0 lead, but they have been penalized more than they expected here in this first half. But think it's tenuous. They have basically been dominant in the first half of this game. And they only have seven points to show for it. And that's good news for San Francisco. Last time the Falcons had the ball, they possessed it for nearly seven and a half minutes and came up with nothing. Second and 15. Three wide receivers and the give inside to Gary Downs. Gary Downs, who Dan Reeves coached with the New York Giants, brought with him to Atlanta, gets 16 yards before Zach Bronson brings him down. And talk about being decisive. Gary Downs was decisive. He saw the hole and he hit it. And it was just a matter of pure speed. They caught him in a stunt. Dolman came inside. He ran right between it. And then a good job by Ephraim Salam of getting on the linebacker. It allowed Downs to get into that second level and a big first down. Okay. Downs carried the ball only once in the regular season. Jamal Anderson is back in the lineup. First down at the 45-yard line, and Anderson gets the handoff. And it's uh, Tubbs right there to greet him. Not much. And that'll bring up second down. NFC Divisional Playoff, the Atlanta Falcons, 14-2 on the year, winning their last nine, meeting the San Francisco 49ers for the third time this year. They split the previous two, and the Falcons are leading 7-0, and it's been their defense that has been the story thus far. And you can see the 49ers held to only 61 total yards. And one first down. Second down and eight. Chandler, oh, and what a great catch by Terrence Mathis. He had to extend himself, and Mathis making a sensational play. I'll tell you how good it was. They were so good, <laughs> even he had to clap for it. <laughs> 17 pickup for Mathis on the play to the 33. Look at that smile, and, and with good reason. He's going to break to the inside. The ball's going to be thrown to the outside, and pure hands. Darnell Walker thought he had himself a play, maybe a pick. And in the end of this play, we mentioned it was so impressive. That when he was down the ground, heck, he clapped for himself. <laughs> As well he should. It's tough enough to make the catch, but have a uh, defender knock into you. Yeah, he's fired. That's good. You know, when you can have fun when you're playing, it doesn't get any better. And it looks like the Falcons do. That was a 19-yard gain. And here is Jamal Anderson. Anderson with one defender. And Merton oh, Hans oh, tries to push him out. Touchdown, down Jamal Anderson. He just ran right through Merton Hanks. What an effort at the end of that play. From the stiff arm to the awareness of knowing where the cone was and then launching himself, understanding that the ball has to cross the plane regardless of where his body is. He takes it inside and it's six points. USA, America, Welcome Jamal Anderson and his mom to start him. Gordon Anderson to try to add the 14th point for the Falcons. And the kick is good. And if there are some doubters as to whether the Falcons were as good as their record, they're getting an idea now. The Falcons now open up a 14-0 lead over the 49ers. puts you in complete control, quite like the Agile DeVille. You're really moving, you feel so soothing, you're making whoopee. DeVille, for the time of your life. Melvin and Lola Zumbrunnen have a cattle ranch in Lusk, Wyoming. Come go! Come go! 
probably some of the gentlest cattle in this area. <laughs> he sorts through all his cow statistics on Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. I can take one cow and I can go back and look at all the calves that she's had, and if they're all good ones, I keep the cow. Melvin uses software to manage his herd because his livelihood depends on his cows. A coach is a leader, a motivator, like a big brother. A coach brings out the best in you. He shows you what it takes to succeed. He's someone you can count on. He's a friend when you need one. He's someone I'll always remember. The NFL is proud to honor Adrian Morrell's former coach, Gary Allen Cujillo Clark of Provo, Utah, as the NFL High School Coach of the Year. From the mind and mouth of Eddie Murphy, Mother Mary and Barry, Holy moly, what on earth a kid? Comes the PJs, series preview tomorrow after The Simpsons. Watch what the Falcons do. Tim McDonald's the extra guy you can't account for him. So they run away, and they pull the guard and Kozlowski. There's the cut on Kozlowski to Tubbs, and then it's to the secondary. Now watch Jamal Anderson. Get out of my way, you little DB. Push to the <laughs> face, and then a phenomenal effort on the end to get in. 34 yards and the longest rush in Falcon playoff history. The guy that had the previous record was the place kicker, Mick Luckhurst, back in 83. And the kick by Anderson goes deep into the end zone for a touchback. Great players make great plays. Jamal Anderson switches the ball, has the awareness, and takes it in for six. A high-flying bird is Jamal Anderson. We're going all the way. Nothing's stopping us. It's high ground by nightfall. Go! Go! Critics are calling the thin red line powerful, outstanding, and astounding. I want you to attack. I want you to attack right now. An instant war film classic. Two thumbs up. Visions you'll never be able to shake. What difference do you think you can make one single man in all this madness? The Thin Red Line. Rated R. Limited engagements now playing. Opens Friday everywhere. This is my grandpa Giovanni. Nobody tells stories like he does. Give him good food and good people, he'll charm you all night. That's how it was last night at the Olive Garden. Where everything feels more like family, more Italian. Then, out came the chicken scampi. It was perfect. Pasta and sauteed chicken covered with this rich garlicky sauce, plus all the salad and breadsticks you want for $8.95. What a feast it was for all of us. Our ears, too. You're beautiful. The Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Is there a problem? Well, it's a road up there. It's quite slippery, sharp curves. Never know what's gonna pop up in front of you. Go ahead. Well, what about him? Yeah, well, he's got Stabilitrack. Seville STS with Stabilitrack, the world's most advanced integrated stability control system. It's what's next. Gonna let me go? Uh, sorry, I was lost in the moment. Seville STS, it's what's next. Tuesday, the volunteer fire unit is acting like children. So who's the best man for this job? Peggy Hill. Oh, yeah! All new King of the Hill, Fox Tuesday. Jamal Anderson and the man he beat to the end zone, Merton Hanks, 14 to nothing in favor of the Falcons. Anderson's second touchdown run of the day. He's gained 83 yards already. 49ers start from the 20. Steve Young. Looking for a receiver, can't find one. And Young going deep for Terry Kirby, and it's broken up downfield by the linebacker, Cornelius Bennett, who is about 45 yards downfield. You know, what is so beautiful about that particular play was Cornelius Bennett had been beaten, and he knew it. And he turned and he ran as hard as he could. And watch his eyes. See, he looked back inside. That's a mistake. Now he stopped. Now he knows he's beaten. Watch him run, and he looks at the head. He's looking. When Kirby looked, he looked. And only because of the discipline and remembering what you have to do do you make that play. Former Buffalo Bill has the most playoff experience of this Falcon team. And we have movement in the line and a lot of pointing going on between Antonio Edwards, the Falcon defensive end, and Derek Deese. Without Garrison Hurst, with a banged up Terry Kirby, 
and down by 14. Now you start to have to lean more on one dimension, especially with at the three minute mark in this second half. Lag is thrown. Neutral zone infraction. Number 97. Defense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Calling it on Cornelius Bennett. That'll be a five yard penalty. It'll be second and five. It looked like Antonio Anderson kind of jumped the gun a little bit, but apparently it was on Cornelius. Oh, now he just changed his mind and said it was uh, Edwards. Edwards. And it's uh, difficult to hear the microphone by the referee, Jerry Markwright. Huge edge for the Falcons in total yardage. Second down and five at the 25 yard line, and the pass nearly intercepted by Eugene Robinson. Intended for J.J. Stokes, and a flag is down. So a penalty marker down as uh, Stokes downfield, and they're going to call this against the Falcons. Pass and interference, number 20. And Michael defense, Booker called for pass interference. Will give the 49ers a first down at the 41. Remember, you can get your hands on him for five yards. Get your hands. Now he missed him. Now he's going to run with him. Now there's some jostling back and forth tonight. That's a bad call. Now let him play. Now one guy who wasn't going to make sure if it was a good or a bad call was Eugene Robinson. Watch the eyes. He sees it. Get to the football. Try to make a play. 16-yard penalty against the Falcons. First down. And here is Steve Young. Fires the ball. And the pass is ruled incomplete intended for Clark. We got it things. was Greg Clark the tight end and it was Shane Dronet who put big pressure on Steve Young slow getting up. We got things flopping all over the place. We got quarterbacks going down balls being thrown late helmets flying off one side guys diving. This game is turning into a humdinger. Watch Travis Hall at the bottom of the pile. His helmet gets ripped off by Dolman. Young gets the pressure from Dronet and has the presence as he's falling to throw the ball. I think it's getting mean out there a little. Oh, that's life in the National Football League. Look at a great facial expressions by the youngster. And the 49ers are calling a timeout with 2.45 remaining in the first half. Steve Young under pressure from Shane Dronette, the former Bronco who's having his best year. He hasn't been sacked, but he has been hit and hurried several times already. And he's trying to walk off a little bit of a, a little bit of a bump. You know, talking to Steve Young prior to the game. You know, he's he's a quirky guy. He's one of my favorite guys. I play with him and heck, he ate dinner at my house all the time, and so I have an affinity for him. But one of the quirks he has is he hates astroturf, and he carries and travels his own dirt, <laughs> and he has it on the sideline. And he likes to rub the dirt in his hands because he says, "I hate plastic." But there's something good about the feel and smell of dirt. So as long as he doesn't put it in his pocket. Yeah, he can do that too. It won't matter. He just wants it on his hands. That can get messy. There's and there's some of those dirt right there in those cups. And he'll take that and rub it in his hands. That's all right. Whatever it takes. You know, if you think you need dirt, have a whole feel. Or or if you want your uh, legs to get taped up, you do that too, don't you? You have to. You know, big games require big things. 49er timeout. They have two remaining, second and ten at the 41. Steve Young and the pass off the hands of J.J. Stokes and a good job in coverage that time by Booker. You know, you're seeing Booker working over there on Stokes, but what we haven't mentioned is the other side of Jerry Rice, and there's a reason. That's Ray Buchanan. Buchanan making like Mike Haynes, the Hall of Famer who I played with, just shadowing Rice all over the field. Speaking with him the other day he said, you know, my battle's not with Jerry Rice. My battle is with Steve Young. And Young has only thrown to Jerry Rice once so far today. Third and ten. Four wide receivers for the 49ers and the pass. And it is ruled caught by J.J. Stokes. Stokes, who is 6'4", and defended by Michael Booker, who's 6'2", and the tallest Cornerback on the Atlanta Falcons makes a fine catch, 12 yards, and a first down for the 49ers. This is just a matter of J.J. Stokes running the good route. See the hips? He was trying to hold the outside position. He made him bite to the inside just a tad, 
and that ball's thrown very, very well. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, then again, Mr. Turf could have had a hand in that thing, too. First down at the 47. Stokes had five catches last week against Green Bay. That's a lateral That's throw a lateral. behind. That's a and double. it's into the hands of Chuck Smith. That's a loose ball. And Chuck Smith going to the end zone. The score, touchdown Falcons. It was a lateral and a free ball. The key to the play is where the quarterback throws from. Now there's a flag on the play, and there's an official calling it back at the 45-yard line. Once that ball is thrown behind the quarterback, it becomes a lateral. And now we have uh, five officials conferring. It was clearly thrown behind, and it should have been a lateral. And Watch. it should be a Falcon score. Well, there's also a flag, so you have to wait and see. See, he throws this backwards. That is clearly a lateral, and I'm wondering if it wasn't going to be set up because Terry Kirby can throw the football. I think you're right, Matt. I think it was a halfback option pass intended to be. And Henri Crockett does an excellent job of not only keeping the ball away from Kirby, but keeping it alive for someone else to make a play. Here is Jerry Mark Wright with the explanation. The ruling is a backward pass recovered by Atlanta. The recover was down by contact. First, First down. down Atlanta. Okay, now he's saying they don't get the score, Chuck, but they get the ball. Because Chuck Smith picked up the ball, and they're saying that he was touched at that time when he was down. And once he's touched, it's, it's dead right there. And down the Falcons, by contact. Matt had six defensive touchdowns this year, including one by Chuck Smith, who ran 71 yards against New England with a fumble recovery, so they're used to that kind of score. Two-minute warning. We'll be right back. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Miller Lite, an official sponsor of the NFL and Super Bowl 33. TV. Because DirecTV gives them more movies, sports, and a variety of programming they just can't get from cable. So what are you looking at? If it's not DirecTV, see your retailer for a demo today. Psst. Eat the Whopper. That's 40 grams of fat. Whopper down the hatch. Incoming. Don't listen to him. <laughs> he does not care about you. Listen to your smarter half. Go to Subway, where you can get one of seven subs of six grams of fat or less. Subway, the way a sandwich should be. It's every man's fantasy. Oh, that's disgusting. But can these two keep it a secret? You were saying? Depends on what you heard. An all-new Ali McBeal, Fox Monday. Whoa, look out! Hi there. Need stopping power? Get genuine Midas brakes installed for $69.95 after rebate for a limited time. And, of course, our lifetime guarantee. Go Midas. Hey, you won't believe this one. The officials now are saying that it was recovered by San Francisco right here and that he was down by contact, not Chuck Smith. So instead of not only not getting the ball or the touchdown, they're saying San Francisco has the ball at the point of the recovery. He had no possession at all. There's the lateral. It's a free ball. Now he has to get the ball back. No they're possession. Saying, now they're saying that that is where he was down by contact, which is a complete... Farce. The ball is down. He doesn't have possession. This is unbelievable. In a year where the officiating has been so scrutinized and blatantly wrong, this one takes the cake. Yeah, you know, that's enough to give somebody a heart attack. No pun intended. You got to worry about uh, Dan Reeves. This is the first play that Dan Reeves has been exercised over, and right 
Rightfully I, so. Dick, I don't care what the league says about it. I don't care. They are wrong with a capital. This should be a rough. touchdown for the Atlanta Falcons. Not even close. Instead, the 49ers have the ball, and the crowd responds with a chorus of boos. Second down and 18, and the pass tipped away by Booker, and a flag is down, and we'll have a false start call against the 49ers. Right the Dick lost false it all that. Start. Number 81. Was there was a flag offense. at the end of the play. Nobody said a word about it. Second down. They did not follow it up. Look at Dan Reeves watching the play unfold up on the big scoreboard. He's saying, look, there it is. There's the play. It's, it's a touchdown. It's a fumble recovery. And they're saying, no. Now, this was the flag that was never, I don't know anything about. It was between Michael Booker and Terrell Owens. They threw the flag, but I don't know where that one got to. This is a wild game. No, Dick. That was a pathetic flurry of officiating. Second and 23 at the 40-yard line. Steve Young back to throw and intended for Jerry Rice. Nowhere near him. Terry Kirby never had possession. The ball was on the ground, and the 49ers never had the ball for the player to be down. Well, coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris will have first-half analysis plus a preview of tomorrow's Arizona-Minnesota game in our Fox Sports ticker with up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. Dick, I know you got your buddy Hubie Brown up here, one of the basketball analysts and former head coach. And I turned around, looked at him, he said, it's unbelievable. Even I can see that. He would have had two technicals and would have been tossed from the He'd game. He would have been thrown right out of the game if that one would have shown up. Third down and 23. Chuck Levy, the running back. And the pass is caught by Levy out of the backfield. Chuck Levy, who's got as much speed as anyone on this 49er team, and a big gain to the 26-yard yard line of 34 yards. And it was Brooking who brought him down. Not an easy task with Levy. With a nice call by the 49ers of seeing coverage and then just running Levy right down the middle. See, they're going to split. He sees it right away. Eugene Robinson has a shot, doesn't wrap his arms. Bad job. A nice job of Levy of keeping his legs moving and running through. Young sees it right away. He sees the coverage split. He knows the weakness. You hit it right in the middle, and it's a big play. And the 49ers use their second timeout of the first half, and they have been the best in the National Football League at scoring touchdowns in the first half two-minute drill. They have nine touchdowns in the final two minutes, and right now they are uh, sitting pretty at the 26-yard line with plenty of time remaining, 138. I think I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to refocus, but I'm in shock over that call. I don't care what anybody, I mean, I saw it with my own eyes. That was completely wrong. I would say it's one thing to have a call that goes the other, should go the other way, but a touchdown, called back, no possession, and a wrong call in almost three Top. different instances. Well, and if somebody tells me instant replay wouldn't overturn it, I'm going to take the ball and shove it down <laughs> their throat. Because that's, that's, that's ridiculous. I don't think Dan Reeves wanted that kind of a play in his return to the sidelines today. First down at the 26, two tight ends for the 49ers, and the pass to one of them, Greg Clark, is caught in a gain of about eight or nine. Cornelius Bennett defending on the play, and plenty of time remaining, less than a minute and a half to go. Boy, there's a nice matchup outside with no help. Jerry Rice on Ray Buchanan to the top side. No safety back there to help him as well. Second down and one, and here is the pass to the corner of the end zone, and it is caught by Jerry Rice for the touchdown. And this shouldn't have been, frankly. And the 49ers are back in the game, and the crowd disturbed over that officiating mess moments ago. Well, Steve Young saw the same thing I saw. I would do it. Working outside on Buchanan. Nice move by Rice to make him bite. Ray Buchanan made the mistake of not looking back at the right time. He tried to feel it the whole way. And he has tossed a shutout to that point. Wade all of a sudden, yep. it's 14-7, and you got a game, boys. And, you know, this may fire up the Atlanta Falcons. This may fire up the San Francisco 49ers because they know they got away with one. And it all was made possible, the touchdown pass. 17 yards to Rice on this play. Watch what happens. He throws it backwards. This is the controversial play. 
That's a free ball. Now they're saying right there that that was possession. That's baloney. This should be six going the other way. With Chuck Smith running it in. So we went from 21 nothing to 14 7 on this play because he was out there man to man. Young saw it, gave the pump. Rice did a nice job of making him bite inside, and it was six quick. Jerry Rice catching three touchdown passes in the two games in the regular season. And Terrell Owens coming in to congratulate Jerry Rice, who came in with 29 <laughs> career touchdowns against the Falcons, Matt. That's more touchdowns by any player against any team in NFL history. Did you see Terrell Owens at the end? Mm -hmm. He told you what he thought about that dirty bird. Cut the old throat right off. He did that when he scored a touchdown in mid-November against the Atlanta Falcons. So the lead is halved to 14 to 7. Minute and 10 remaining in the first half. Wade Ritchie will kick off. Tim Dwight and Elijah Williams back deep. And Ritchie kicking it in the end zone. Tim Dwight with a running start. Stumbles forward and is down before he reaches the 20. I think that was an excellent play by Zach Bronson because the middle was wide open. And if he doesn't make him trip up, Tim Dwight might still be running. It's good blocking by the upfront people. I want you to watch how this middle is going to open. They do an excellent job right here. Look at this. Look at this lane. Bronson's got to make a play. And he just kind of nicks him. And actually, I think the turf monster got, got Tim Dwight as well. Williams is running down and gets knocked out of his lane, but then is able to come back and get in on the play. Well, we'll see what the Falcons do in their one-minute drill. They do have all three of their timeouts remaining. They start from the 19-yard line. Chris Chandler. As all day, and he completes the pass to the 41. Hey, nobody touched him. He should run. To Ronnie Harris. It didn't look to me like Tim Dwight was touched by Zach Bronson. Timeout is called. Ronnie Harris with the reception. Harris signed before the game the last time these teams played. Good speed. Who had to perform with the Seattle Seahawks. And the first timeout by Atlanta. You got to make sure that you're down by contact. Oh, and there it was. That was good by Bronson. Okay, bad call by me. Which isn't the first one, that's for sure. I count three in the last 30 years for you, Matt. <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad percentage, you know. You know. I have seen where guys have made a catch and defenders are standing there like, I can't believe you made the catch. And they get up and run and give up a big play. Awareness, the same awareness that Jamal Anderson had, knowing where that cone was to get in. It carries throughout the game. Well, the Falcons with a 22-yard pickup and the still two timeouts remaining have a first down on their 41. Chandler, 8 of 12 for 128 yards. Under a minute to go in the first half. The side shows have been as exciting as the games and free play. And it's not going to count. to the 35. Flag was down. Yeah. Charles Haley got in there first, Matt. Yeah, because he jumped. Charles Haley is working on Whitfield. And he got a little bit of a jump early, and so they're going to bring that back. Outside, number 95, defense. You're right. Five, Five yards, yards will be marked off. First down. 48 seconds showing on the clock. Charles Haley is as smart a player as I've ever been around. You're going to watch him right down here. There's the jump, and there's the flag, and here's the sack. And he just works Whitfield just with power. The difference with Charles Haley between now and when he, a few years ago, is he was around 245, 250. Now he's 270. Been in on 12 plays, 31 last week against the Packers. First down and five and a designed rollout. It's batted in the air and it's intercepted. And the 49ers get it back. Junior Bryant with the interception off of the deflection by and Charles the Haley. That's right. Boy, what an impact he has made in a short period of time. It's phenomenal. But the turnover, and now the 49ers have a chance to score some points. Dick Haley took an inside move, and they tried to roll away from him. So he just kept on coming. And then he got his hands up, knocked the ball in the air, and Junior Bryant comes down with it. Now they're going to say, now watch this. Here's the end. The ground can't cause the fumble. He's down. That's a good call. But this is all set up by Charles Haley. Hard inside move. They rolled away. Again, presence. Get your hands up. Tips the ball. And now you give the 49ers another shot with 38 seconds. And they still have one timeout remaining. There is Charles Haley. 
Came out of retirement. First down from the 36, Steve Young. And he's got J.J. Stokes at the 20-yard line. Ray Buchanan all over him. And the clock continues to run under a half a minute remaining. 49ers already in field goal range. And Young throws it away and stops the clock with 15 seconds remaining in the hand. 49ers have one more timeout. You're on the 20 yard line with 15 seconds. You got to take your shot into the end zone. You got to take your shot. There's Rich but Brooks who is upstairs now down on the sideline. The, the other thing to remember is because you do have that one timeout, you can use the entire field. And it's okay if you use the underneath to try to run it in. Second and ten, flag down. And they uh, come on in. It uh, appears that the penalty might be against the offense. Judging by the headlinesmen running in, we'll see what Jerry Markbright reports. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 81. And Terrell Owens offense. anxious to get out of the clear. Down. Guilty of the foul. Five yard penalty. Will push him back five yards. And that's not what the Niners need now with Wade Ritchie waiting in the wings to try to bring the 49ers closer. Last week, Ritchie with a 48 yard field goal against the Packers, the longest in the 49er playoff history. Now there are still 15 seconds remaining in the first half. Steve Young and the pass knocked down, intended for Rice, and it was Ray Buchanan. No help again, Dick. Rich Brooks is saying, Ray Buchanan, we think you're good enough to handle him by yourself. Now there's going to be a safety sitting inside, which is why he's holding the outside. Now he's going to break. Ooh, nice job actually by Rice of knocking that ball away the transition game Rice went from receiver to defender to make sure Buchanan doesn't come down with it But now Matt even with one timeout remaining They would have to go to the end zone right now because they could risk the time running out with 10 seconds to go if they go underneath right Third down and 15 pump fake by Steve Young and he's going to run it and is tackled Two seconds, and they'll get a chance to try the field goal with one second remaining in the half. Bennett made the tackle and one more delay, and that would have ended the 49ers' chances. But Wade Ritchie comes on to try to bring the 49ers to within four. Good coverage all around the field, and that's what Young is looking at. He tries to pump. It wasn't there. Then he realizes he's got to do something. And actually, this... He should have just thrown that thing away. He got lucky because it was down to one second. There's no way to know when you're, you know, being crazy legs harsh to know <laughs> where the heck that clock is. Unless it's on the ceiling. Right. 35-yard field goal attempt coming up. Ty Detmer will be the holder, and Wade Ritchie will attempt the field goal. Well, a controversial play. Nullifies a Falcon touchdown and a turnover gives the 49ers a chance to add three more. 36 yard field goal attempt by Richie is good, and that'll do it as the 49ers, who could have been behind 21 0, now trail by four. That's the end of the first half with the score the Falcons 14, the 49ers 10. Fox NFL Sunday will continue. JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris, the Visa halftime report coming up in just a moment. Tomorrow on Fox, Eddie Murphy is changing the face of television. What on earth the kid? But first, Homer Simpson gets hitched in Vegas. We are so dead. Then, it's Eddie Murphy. Look at the size of this stone. This is one big El Negro. Like you've never seen him before. Whitney Houston, we have a problem. The PJs, a special preview. And... Does that look like a man who can control the weather? It's an all-new X-Files. Eddie Murphy headlines a night of all-new episodes tomorrow on Fox. The word is out in cyberspace. Buy.com is the internet superstore. <laughs> Buy.com will deliver to your home or office. Whether it's the hottest videos and DVDs. 
the coolest video games, tons of great books. For the latest computer hardware and software, Buy.com has the lowest prices on earth. Buy.com. Why buy anywhere else? It seems obvious, really, that the people who created the nation's first fiber optic network would be the ones making wireless clearer. Sprint PCS. We built the only all-digital nationwide network from the ground up for a new level of clarity. It's the clear alternative to cellular. Or maybe you've already heard. Your Ford Stores and All Be All event has been extended, and for a limited time, you can still save big. Get a 98 deal in a 99 world. Get low 09 financing for up to 48 months on every 99 Escort, ZX2, Contour, and Windstar. Get 19 financing on every 99 Explorer, Ranger, and Taurus. Or choose big cash back from $500 to $1,000. This is the End All Be All event. With only days left to save. For the best selection, visit your local Ford Store today. I am not a role model. I'm not a model of any kind. You can tell that just by looking at me. I am not a role model. I'm paid to do sports news, to narrate highlights, and use really cool catchphrases that you can repeat again and again. I'm not a role model. But just because I say, from way downtown, bang, that does not mean I should raise your kids. Seinfeld, weeknights at 6.30 on Fox Chicago. Welcome to the Visa Halftime Report. Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. As we welcome you to the Visa Halftime Show here in Los Angeles, San Francisco makes it a game on this 17-yard reception by Jerry Rice from Steve Young. A field goal makes it 14-10. San Francisco now within four points of the Atlanta Falcons down at the Georgia Dome. As we welcome you back here to Los Angeles for House, a controversial call in the first half. Talk about a big momentum swing. Terry, let's talk about the mechanics of that and what happened. First of all, it's a lateral. Steve Young back, throws to Terry Kirby. Kirby loses the ball, it hits the ground. Now, there you have it. He's fighting there with Crockett. Crockett pops the ball up, Smith and there you see it. Smith. Smith takes it in for a touchdown, 21 to nothing. That was in real speed. That's in real speed. Now, in slow speed, there. Kirby fumble. He goes down. In comes Crockett. No control. He's laying on it. Up, ball's popping out. Rolls over his forearm. He's tackled by Crockett. Ball goes up in the air. And then you see Chuck Smith. Let me show you exactly what I think happened. Get this watch off. What exactly happened was when Kirby went down, he did not use his left arm. He cradled the ball with his right hand. And as he came up, the ball rolled out. Now, the judge calls, the referee calls that control down. No whistle, guys. The ball's popped up in the air by Crockett, and Smith picks it off and takes it for a touchdown. I do not think there was control. Two weeks in a row now, the 49ers have benefited from bad officiating. Nobody has been more critical of the officials this year than I have been, but I think they got this one right. When you look at this play, Terry Kirby is going to be on the ground. His knee is on the ground. He scoops up the ball with one arm. You cannot pick the ball up three See? feet off the ground without having control of it. His knee was on the ground. They whistled him down. Play over. Play done. The officials they did got not it right. Whistle him. It doesn't down. matter if they did or not. The question is, was he down? Was he touching the ground with his knee when he had control of the ball? And the answer is yes. Now, you know what? We, we don't have the officials don't have the benefit that we have of seeing this at real speed, at slow motion speed. Very difficult job to accomplish. I understand that. It's too close for me to call. The thing that bothers me, though, is this. No whistle is blown. Chuck Smith goes in for an apparent touchdown, 21 to nothing. The thing that bothers me is they go back and correct a call that's not made. The whistle's not blown. He's not ruled down. It's a touchdown. But they refuse to go back and correct a call that they do make that's bad, the Jerry Rice fumble. There's too much at stake right now. 
people's livelihoods, their passion. This means a lot to a lot of people. It means a lot to Dan Reeves, and I'm concerned about his composure. And the thing also. that bothers me is they huddle up like a hen over her, her, her babies, and then they make they come out and they make this decision. If it's so clear cut, why didn't the back judge, why didn't the umpire, the referee rule it down right off the bat? That's why I think it's wrong. That ball was a fumble. Okay. They got and together, they the, had a huddle, they talked about it, they got it right. That's what's big, important. Man, that's that's right. what's big big momentum shift oh, indeed. No now, let's that. talk about the second half. San Francisco clearly without Garrison Hurst out with the broken leg. Momentum shift has now gone to San Francisco. What happened second half? I'll tell you what, the 49ers, I, I'm sure, are jumping up and down. It's 11 o'clock on the West Coast. They have finally woken up. The wake-up call has come. The defense got caught doing what? Worrying about a call that was blown exactly. or they perceived to be blown. If I'm the Atlanta Falcons, I'm in that locker room and I'm banging off lockers. I'm madder than hell and I'm coming out with fire breathing out of my mouth. I just think the 49ers have to get back to their style of offense. They're back in the football game now. Go back to their ball control, short passing game. They've been trying to get the football down the field. They can take advantage of this Falcons secondary underneath. I'm not so sure that Jerry Rice is the guy against Ray Buchanan. Terrell Owens, J.J. Stokes in the second half. Yeah, they took advantage of the underneath coverage last week in Green Bay, got zero for it until the very end when they threw the 25-yard touchdown pass, and that's the way I thought they had to win this football game. But right now, the key here, Atlanta, forget it. Come out. You still got to win. Forget about the bad officiating and come back and take control. For those opposed to replay, this is why they are opposed, because it sparks this kind of passionate discussion. This Dan Reeves, cardiologist, cool. has got to be concerned oh, unless he producer. sees more of these touchdowns by Jamal Anderson. Second half with Dick and Matt coming up after this. You can own the Dallas Cowboys because Jerry Jones has given up the boys for a day. Congratulations. You'll fly to Dallas, check out a game from the owner's box, tour the field, and meet the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. It's easy to enter. Just log on to FoxSports.com. Then catch the Fox Super Bowl pregame show between 11 and 2 Eastern to find out how you can own the Cowboys for a day. Men who have battled as brothers through combat thick and thin confront each other for a prize only one can win. Eddie Murphy returns to TV with a wild new look. I got a gun. Don't worry, it's me, the super. Ah! When you gonna fix this hole? A bold new attitude. Let's fight the power. In a revolutionary new show about life in the projects. What? Introducing the PJs. Free. Well, what do you think I'm doing? The series that could only happen on Fox. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Series preview tomorrow. Halftime at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, where the Falcons lead the San Francisco 49ers by a score of 14 to nothing. And hope you've been on the internet to play You Call It all season long. And the grand prize winner of the You Call It game is Ralph Hughes of Jasper, Indiana. Way to go, Congratulations Ralph, to Ralph. Enjoy the game. And part two, ask the pros, and we have uh, sent one in from Hockendockwa, Pennsylvania. And today's question for Matt Millen comes from Jared Sherman in Reston, Virginia. How does this 49er defense match up with their Super Bowl winning units in the past? Matt? Well, it's not as strong, and I think that's one of the things that people have talked about. In fact, I was just listening to Joe Montana talk about that last night on a tape that I saw, and, and he was mentioning about the strength of defense. Now, is that to say that this defense isn't strong enough to win it? No, it's just not as strong as the 49er defense is in the past. And they don't have Ronnie Lott, and that's a big... Minus for them. So we'll be back to talk about the first half. This was the controversial play. Terry Kirby, was he down by contact? Did he have possession? So many questions, and we'll be back in a moment. Catch a full day of Super Bowl pregame action beginning at 11 Eastern on Fox.
with Ameritech's 24-hour monitoring center, we're always working to get your call through so you can relax. Are you calling for help? I was going to order lunch first. I think the deli over there delivers. Hmm. Now get free nights and weekends and 200 peak minutes for just $39.95 a month. And relax, it's Ameritech. So what do you feel like? Tuna. Brighten your rooms with Glidden Paint from Menard. Spread Ultra Flat 18-year interior paint is just $9.99 a gallon after rebate. Bring in any kind of color sample and Menards will match and mix it free. Beautify your bath with help from American Shower and Bath. This 32-inch white corner shower is just $196. A 38-inch gold tone neo-angle shower, only $269. Home improvements are easy with big savings from Menards. Save big money at Menards. Who care about what we do? Make sure everything is just right. We're proud to have our name on our work. That's what Jiffy Lube Signature Service is all about. Jiffy Lube Signature Service. Our name is on the line. And we offer Penn's oil. Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana's favorite oil change. Hey, you Morty Briskin? Who's asking? Had a hard time finding this place. Dear Mort, you have been accepted to Harvard University and awarded a scholarship. Congratulations on all your accomplishments. You must respond, however, by May 1978. Better late than ever. <laughs> Got an important package? Send it FedEx and be absolutely sure. See you in September. The Simpsons, weeknights at 5.30 on Fox Chicago. Here in San Francisco and in cities across the nation, communities are facing a critical problem, children at risk. Hi, I'm Ray Brown with the San Francisco 49ers. Through United Way, we've seen programs that work to solve problems. That's why we're part of the NFL United Way team, bringing all the community resources together to protect all children. The NFL, the United Way, and you, the power of teamwork. Ready for the start of the third quarter. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics with the Falcons leading 14 to 10 on the scoreboard. Uh, and even with the end of that first half, you can see the difference right here. And the 49ers have not been able to run the football. Uh, the Falcons have, and they've dominated the first half, but they've given up the 10 to 10 points. You know, what's amazing is that Garrison Hurst who suffered a broken left fibula is still the leading rusher for the 49ers with seven yards one carry seven yards he got hurt out for the rest of the game and we're ready now to start the second half the Falcons will get the ball Wade Ritchie kicking off for the 49ers a line drive kick into the end zone and it'll be uh, down by Tim Dwight and right now let's go down to Pam Oliver Thanks a lot, Dick. I talked to Steve Mariucci at the half as his team went into the locker room with a bit more momentum. He says what they want to do for the second half is to try to establish the run game. He does not want to fall into a situation where Steve Young and the 49ers are having to pass for their lives. He seemed very encouraged about the way things develop before the break. Sometimes, I guess, Dick, it's better to be lucky than good. Back to you. No question about it, and they were a little lucky last week, too, with Jerry Rice on what appeared to be a fumble. The whistle blew against Green Bay, and uh, all that is to... Uh, the consternation of Dan Reeves, but the Falcons come out on the 20 yard line, leading by four. They go to their bread and butter, Jamal Anderson, and Anderson, who gained 83 yards and two touchdowns in the first half, gets two right here. You know, Pam said it best, it's better to be lucky than good. This was last week at the end of the game, which would have sealed the game for the Green Bay Packers. And this game, this is a major swing. It's a, it went from 21 nothing to inevitably 14 to 10. And that is luck. And even when you play it back in full speed, it doesn't it look as if Kirby had possession. Dick, down. I don't care what anybody says. There's no way that that is not a fumble. Second down and eight. Tony Martin in motion. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up effectively, and Chandler finds an open man. Tony Martin, who is in motion and a first down, but the Falcons picked up the blitz and a gain of 17. You said it perfectly, Dick. 
The whole key is picking that blitz. They're going to come right up and stream inside. So a good job by the guard, and Tobek does a nice job. And then Jamal Anderson finishes it off. And because you pick that thing up, and it's a zone blitz, but because you pick it up inside and give him time, you're able to hit him across the middle for a first down. Jamal Anderson with two touchdowns on the ground in the first half. Young hit Jerry Rice for the 49ers score and a field goal on the final play of the half. From the 39-yard line, Jamal Anderson, and he's going nowhere. Ken Norton Jr. slices in. No gain on the play. Nice read by Ken Norton Jr. They pulled that backside guard. They're going to try to get to the outside, and he read it perfectly. You know, Ken Norton has never been a real physical linebacker from his spot, but they don't ask him to be. They cover him up, and they let him play to his strengths. And what they are is running to the football, he's good in the open field, and he's good in coverage. Second down and ten, two tight ends line up for the Falcons. Chandler again up the middle, and he's got Terrence Mathis. Minimal gain, maybe about five yards, will bring up third down and about six. What Terry Bradshaw said at, ha at halftime was this absolutely crucial for the Falcons. Forget it. Forget what happened. You can't let it bother you. You have to go right back on the field. You're still up by four. If you'd have said to them prior to the game, we'll give you a 14-10 halftime lead, they'd say, great, we'll take it. So forget all the events that got you to this point. And the 49ers, according to Howie Long, now at the clock they want to be. That's right. Third and five. At the 44-yard line, they spread it out. No one back there defending Chandler and his pass incomplete, but a flag comes down from upfield. O.J. Santiago and Merton gonna Hanks uh, going to be a hold against San Francisco and a first down. Holding number 36. And it's defense. on Hanks as he was holding the tight end coming out of Automatic the backfield. It'll be a first down for the Falcons. You watch right here. It's Merton Hanks working on him. And wrapped yeah. up. Yep. Yeah. That's just, to me, that, that's nothing. That, he had a hand inside, but he never really held him. See, I think at one point, you have to let the guys play. You have to let them play. And usually in playoff games, they do. I mean, I could see why he called it, because he saw the hand go across the waist, but it didn't impede any of his movement. Falcons on the 49, and a fake handoff on the play action. Junior Bryant is chasing Chris Chandler, who goes out of bounds. And, of course, the health of Chris Chandler is so important to the Falcons. When he was hurt, Steve DeBerg took off. They were blasted against the Jets in midseason. They were going to go with the play action inside. And then Terrence Mathis was working Marquez Pope down the sideline. And then to the middle of the field, this is what he wanted to hit. And that's Tony Martin. Nothing there because... When he, after he get the play action, Junior Bryant was right on top of him, and he came back to the other side. Jamal Anderson had Junior Bryant in his sights, too. He wanted a piece of it. Second down and nine, Tim Dwight. Third wide receiver. There's the bunch on the left side. And the pitch goes to Jamal Anderson, blocking on that side, and it breaks down as Ken Norton Jr. again comes in and makes a sterling defensive play. One thing about Dan Reeves, that's that's really impressive. He's, he's not afraid to steal anything. What you just watched right there was the New York Jets. And Bill Parcells, Charlie Weiss, his offensive coordinator, they played them early in the season, and they saw exactly, see this formation? They motion back and then come inside, and you're singled up on the outside. It turns into a bunch. It was so effective against them, he said, heck, I'm going to use it myself. And he's used it effectively since that third down and eight. see if the stutter count drew the 49ers offside. Shane Bonham crossed the line. Encroachment foul, number 78. And it did the job and a five-yard five penalty. penalty. So instead of third and eight, it'll be third down and three for the Falcons. That's a second good job, as you look at Garrison Hurst, of Chris Chandler using the hard count to his advantage. You get people coming in and going out, so you don't really get a real feel for it. Chandler gets him to the line of scrimmage, and 
and it'll get you to jump. Third and three. Looking to throw on third and three, and the pass is uh, caught, but it's short of the first down. Brian Kozlowski making the reception, and Winfred Tubbs all over him, so it is fourth down and about a yard. It's about attitude. And the crowd, uh, of course, urging the Falcons to go for it. This is about attitude right here. Dan Reeves decides to go for it. And they're on the 41 of San Francisco, so if they do not get the first down, they give the 49ers terrific field position. They're going to end up letting this thing go down and then taking the timeout. And let Dan Reeves figure out exactly just what it is he wants to do. And the uh, timeout is called. Reeves may be saying, you know, we want to, we at least want a measurement. The officials are a little testy because uh, he wants a measurement, which is fair. I mean, as a player, you want to know that. So now he forced him to take the timeout. Reeves, Reeves isn't really happy with that. No, because you don't want to waste a timeout in this situation in the second half when you may need all three down the stretch. But I agree with you. I think Reeves wanted a stoppage of the clock to measure. To know exactly where he is. To buy time, and uh, instead he gets charged with a timeout. Apparently. Tell you, they're really testing Dan Reeves today on his return, aren't they, with a few oh. of these plays, calls? Well, it's a timeout, and we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Official's timeout. Guess what? Guess what? Susie Petterman got sick, so I don't have to be the dumb dinosaur. I get to be the peacock. Great. Peacock. Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. For only $99 or less, you can fly coast to coast when you purchase by January 19th and travel January 5th through June 3rd. You are now free to move about the country. Sleek. Sophisticated. Stylish. And yet with an exhilarating V6. Chevy Monte Carlo lets you express that hidden part of your personality. Just dying to get out. Mr. Freeman. How are you? Tommy. Monte Carlo. The side you show the world is up to you. How to speak Australian. Touch football. Beer. Foster's. Australian for beer. Whoa, look out! Hi there! Need stopping power? Get genuine Midas brakes installed for $69.95 after rebate. For a limited time. And of course, our lifetime guarantee. Go Midas. I feel you, babe. I feel you, babe. Oh. Dang! We stay away from you! This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. They called an official's timeout, so the Falcons were not charged with one. It is fourth down and one at the 41-yard line. Three tight ends for the Falcons. And here is Jamal Anderson, and he's not going to make it. Nope. And the 49ers hold on fourth down. Brenson Buckner, who lives in Atlanta, was right in there to make the play. And the 49ers will take over on downs. A gamble by Dan Reeves. Good field position for San Francisco. And a nice play by Brenson Buckner of coming from the backside. They're going to run it to the left. He gets penetration. Nice feet comes from behind and is able to take him down. If you have a big play and you're Steve Mariucci, you whoop it up a little bit. Brinston Buckner did a fine job of keeping his feet and keeping it alive. And he also thinks he has a little bit of burn in him too. They're going to measure and they are short as uh, Jamal Anderson 
gain nothing and so the 49ers take over on downs a gamble by Dan Reeves and the 49ers trailing by only four will have the ball on their 41 yard line as Jamal Anderson is thwarted on his fourth down attempt well the crowds in the game in support of the Falcons defense but before they get too excited we're going to have a break and return to the Georgia Dome in just a moment. Are you concerned about losing more hair? Do you wonder how much further it will go? Do you wish you could do something about it? Well, there's a pill for men with certain types of hair loss. It's called Propecia. In clinical studies, the vast majority of men, 83%, maintain their current hair count, and most, 66%, regrew some hair. Take it daily, and you could see results in as little as three months. Propecia is for men only. A small number of men experience certain sexual side effects, each occurred in less than 2% of men. Women who are or may potentially be pregnant must not use it or handle broken tablets because of the risk of a specific kind of birth defect. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist and read the consumer information they can provide. Propecia. Helping make hair loss history. Who called this meeting? I'm out of here. Descriptions or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Watch and listen to Tim McDonald direct traffic. Great players play with their bodies and their minds. McDonald told you he was going to the other way. Terry Kirby on first down brings it to the 44 yard line. Cornelius Bennett is there for the Falcons. Well, the countdown continues for Super Bowl 33 and the Progressive Auto Insurance Super Bowl 33 halftime show featuring Stevie Wonder, Gloria Estefan, and the big bad voodoo daddy, Matt Millen's friend. That's Sunday, January 31st on Fox. You gotta love him. Big bad voodoo? Yeah. He's my man. Yeah, your man. Second down and six. Does he play pokers? <laughs> Must. <laughs> At the 45, Steve Young. Can't find a receiver, finds one cutting underneath, and it's knocked away. It was a completion and a fumble by Terrell Owens, who recovers it, and after all of that, a gain of only two yards. Nice coverage down the field by the Atlanta Falcons. And they're trying to look for him. Terrell Owens is going to sneak back inside, but he's trying to look for Jerry Rice. Booker is all over him. And because the coverage is there, Young has to come off of it and throw it back inside. Cornelius Bennett gets his hand out and flips the ball. Owens is there to recover. Sets up this third down. Rice and Owens to the top. J.J. Stokes lines up left on third down and eight. And the pass is complete to Terrell Owens. And Owens fighting his way inside the 40-yard line. And a 49er first down. Ray Buchanan defending a gain of 20. And all of a sudden, that gamble by Dan Reeves doesn't look very good right now. Well, Terrell Owens is working outside. Watch how he, see, they always work the hips of the defensive back. And then Terrell Owens is a big physical player. Talked about him earlier, and you know, he had the bad drops last week and then the massive play at the end to, to win it for them. But he is, a, he is, his future is now. On the 37, good hole opening up on the right side for Terry Kirby in a gain of about five yards Kirby last year in the divisional playoff against the Minnesota Vikings gained a career high 120 yards so he has uh, got a big responsibility with uh, Garrison Hurst out with the broken left fibula but uh, Kirby has delivered in the past what Pam was talking about at halftime about what Steve Mariucci said 
What they're really talking to there is patience, and the 49ers are showing patience now. Second and five, Steve Young rolling out right, and the pass is caught. First down of the 25 by Jerry Rice. And the 49ers are in rhythm offensively, perhaps for the first time today. See, what Howie Long was talking about at halftime, about them waking up, he's talking about their body clock. When you're playing on the West Coast and you're getting up at 7.45, which is really 4.45, and you're forced to play at 12.30, which is really 9.30, you may be awake outwardly, but your body doesn't wake up till about the second half, middle of the second quarter on. And now they look like the 49ers. On the Falcon 25, first down. Here is Kirby, and he is met immediately, and it was uh, Jesse Tuggle, and no gain on the play. Garrison Hurst was knocked out and injured on the first play from scrimmage. He gained seven yards, but suffered a broken left fibula, and Garrison Hurst, who had such a brilliant season for the 49ers, giving them a running dimension they haven't enjoyed in years, taken from the field and out for the rest of the game and there he is as a result the 49ers held to only 17 yards rushing thus far second and ten short drop by Young underneath to Terrell Owens and uh, a yard is all they're going to give him Henri Crockett the linebacker was wrapped around Terrell Owens when you look at this Falcon defense you know we talked about their A player being Ray Buchanan, but that man right there, Jesse Tuggle, plays with a great attitude. I mean, he just looks like he's mad all the time inside. And I think, it, it, not the look, but the attitude is what's important. Because he's not a big guy. In fact, when he has his problems, when a big body gets on him. But when that body's on him, it's usually going backwards because Tuggle will rock you. He's emblematic of this defense. They're not big guys, but they knock you back. Third and nine. Oh, Steve Young is not happy at all with Terry Kirby. And he calls a disgusted timeout. Which is different from a regular <laughs> timeout. And there is a disgusted timeout coming up. He even hits him on the way back. The first for the 49ers here in the third quarter. Somewhere east of Prague, north of Budapest, and 700 years in the past, there's a town whose streets haven't gotten wider since the Middle Ages. Good thing there's the agile and durable all-new Chevy Tracker. If it can handle the cramped quarters of this medieval town, it can fit just about anywhere. If you know where the Tracker is, you could win it. For more Tracker information, or to enter, click here. The all-new Chevy Tracker. It gets around. With AT&T Digital One Ray, this isn't just any phone. It's my, hey Rob, how's the powder in Utah phone? My, I'll take the red. No, make that teal phone. My, how are you doing in college phone? My, can you deliver the piano on Tuesday phone? My, Casey scored a goal phone. The world of wireless has changed. AT&T Digital One Rate. No roaming or long distance charges across all 50 states. So now AT&T can make your wireless phone your only phone. That's one race that I wish I could run over one more time. The legendary Daytona 500 has broken a lot of hearts. I was way, way out in front in 1981, and uh, that thing ran out of gas. In 74, I blew a tire with 12 laps to go. But the biggest Daytona heartbreak of all would be trying to get into this year's 500 using an American Express card. So if you want to enjoy the heart-pounding excitement of Daytona, bring your Visa card. It's everywhere you want to be. My girlfriend left me here at Daytona. I sure miss that car. How do you know when your Vegas vacation's gone too far? I'm Mrs. Homer Simpson. Ah! The Simpsons, an all-new episode at 8, 7 central tomorrow. 49ers calling a timeout they really didn't want to take, and now a big third down play coming up. Third down and nine on the 24-yard line of the Falcons, with the Falcons in front 14 to 10. And the pass is intercepted. Eugene Robinson, but a flag is down. Robinson on the return. Eugene Robinson inside the 30-yard line, and Terry Kirby finally upends him. And another flag is down, and the players have piled up at the 35. Heck, we got hats and flags and everything thrown, including fists. Ray Brown and Kevin Gogan in the 
steel cage match on the 35 yard line. I guess we can say now there is no love lost between these rivals playing for the third time for the right to move to the NFC Championship game. Dick, and lost in all that, Steve Young made a bad decision. He tried to force the ball with, with a free safety sitting in there reading his eyes, Eugene Robinson. And he tried to hit down the side J.J. Stokes was working on Booker. Booker had coverage, and then the eyes were just met by Eugene Robinson, who came over and made the pick. Former Green Bay Packer, a big pickup by the Falcons. Not only his abilities as a free safety, but the leadership aspect has uh, done wonders for the Falcons this year. Shane Dronette took a, took a beating off the high rope, <laughs> I believe. That would be a 77-yard return if it goes. I think the the uh, post possession though the 49ers made like Bill Goldberg <laughs> you know, he made like Goldberg and came off the top rope and Eugene holding Robinson. 66 offense that penalty is declined the play stands we have red ball fouls on both teams they offset offsetting, offsetting penalties on the steel cage match they let that ride get a holding on Gogan which they decline Eugene Robinson takes the 77 yard interception return Landley watch Steve Young here's the matchup he sees this is Eugene Robinson now he plays it beautifully the ball's thrown he reads the eyes the break is there before it's ever done Booker has the coverage it was a bad decision and Eugene Robinson read the eyes now watch on the other side because as he's running it's basically a free-for-all and if you're the quarterback you got to get out of the way Chuck Smith makes sure he's out of the way not only is it a bad decision it also hurts on the other end <laughs> Steve Young is fair game in that situation everyone is everyone is and now the crowd is back in so each team has committed a turnover the 49ers Capitalized on the interception thrown by Chris Chandler on the deflection to get a field goal. Now it's first down, Atlanta on the 20 yard line. Jamal Anderson trying to cut to the outside and does. And he gets about nine yards on first down. I want you to watch Jamal Anderson working against Tim McDonald, the extra guy we're talking about. When he walks up, McDonald saw it happen, and he's going to show up on this side of your screen because he's unaccounted for. And then watch the power. He tries to hold him, but he just drags him forward for about nine yards. Excellent job by Jamal Anderson. Second down and one. What a battle between Anderson and McDonald. Ball at the 11-yard line of the 49ers. And here is Anderson. He's got the first down, and that's all he really needed. McDonald made the stop again, but it'll be first and goal for the Falcons. Jamal Anderson is right on the verge of breaking the 100-yard mark against the 49ers for the third time. He's right at 99, and I've been counting every single one. And a 99-yard rushing to this point is a new Falcon playoff record along with two touchdowns a two yard run in the first quarter and a 34 yard brilliant run with a stiff arm and a leap in the second quarter as junior Bryant getting his shoe set on straight that's a, that's an equipment time and they will right. allow you to get your stuff back together before you can play again. How about those numbers well what that really talks about there now he's gonna have to come off the field he can't quite get that that thing in there what that talks about is not so much Jamal Anderson, which is true, but the lack of Garrison Hurst. Gabe Wilkins replaces Junior Bryant, first and goal at the seven. Again, they go to Anderson and nothing doing, and uh, stop for what may be no gain on the play. You mentioned a 100 yard game. Jamal Anderson had 12 this year to lead the NFL, including his last five in the regular season. Boy, they, uh, 49ers, could sure use that man right there, Bryant Young. He was dominant in the first two games this season. In fact, he was the reason why they had to try to run outside because he was so disruptive on the inside. Charles Haley watching from the sidelines on second and goal at the seven. Chandler holding on, and when he's 
been sacked this time 45 times this year. Most of the time, he's held on to the ball. Well, he had to because it was great coverage by the 49ers. Dolman on the sack, second for the team. He was looking to that right side. They were going to try to spring Mathis back underneath. Santiago sat down inside. He couldn't quite find him. Walker was sitting there waiting for the throw. He's looking, looking. It's not there. Now he tries to check back down underneath, and that wasn't there. And then Dolman picks up the garbage. An easy one. He just walked into that sack. So it'll be third down and goal. The ball back at the 15. Chandler under pressure. Stumbles away and is finally stopped at the 12. Chris Dolman once again, who played two years for these Atlanta Falcons. And that will set up a field goal situation for Morton Anderson. That was actually pretty good by Chandler because he would have taken him put him they would have still been able to hit the field goal but he gave them a little bit better shot inside well Morton Anderson 17 year veteran and has missed five field goal attempts this year ironically four of them have come indoors in dome stadiums this is a 29 yard attempt made possible by the coverage of the 49ers Anderson's kick is good, and the Falcons stretch their lead to 17 to 10. There are a lot of frustrations out on the field. Terrence, Ma Terrence Mathis is feeling it because he feels he had six. In the financial world, banking as we have known it has become a thing of the past. Brokerages insurance companies all of our financial institutions are in transition teller windows have become electronic gateways the savings book is now the investment portfolio and financial products which once could only be obtained from a vast number of different sources can now be obtained from one stocks bonds mutual funds planning insurance all have moved to a single place, to the financial mountain called First Union, who for half a century has helped investors seeking diversity, growth, and security. Come to the mountain called First Union, or if you prefer, the mountain will come to you. Here in San Francisco and in cities across the nation, communities are facing a critical problem, children at risk. Hi, I'm Ray Brown with the San Francisco 49ers. Through United Way, we've seen programs that work to solve problems. That's why we're part of the NFL United Way team, bringing all the community resources together to protect all children. The NFL, the United Way, and you, the power of teamwork. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. By First Union, your guide to the financial world. By Propecia, talk to your doctor today. And by E-Trade, the number one rated online broker. Falcons in front of the 49ers, 17 to 10. Morton Anderson's field goal set up by Eugene Robinson's interception and 77-yard return. Anderson kicking off. R.W. McQuarters to receive. And this kick goes into the end zone for about four yards. And McQuarters decides to run it out. And the rookie from Oklahoma State stopped at the 12-yard line and may want to rethink that. Randy Fuller brings him down. Frustrations weren't only for the receiver side. It was also for the quarterbacks as well as Chandler lets upstairs know how he feels. Mm. That was a hard hang-up. Whoa. What kind of messed up place is this? Hey. What's in the jars? <laughs> Stand up. It's the problem. 
things. Those will work. Stupid elves are sticky. acting like children. So who's the best man for this job? Peggy Hill. Oh, yeah! All new King of the Hill, Fox Tuesday. Back here at the Georgia Dome, John Burrow and Esra Tua Olo have come in on the left side of the defensive line for the Falcons. Steve Young starting from the 14. Terry Kirby in motion to the right. Young looked that way. And now goes down. That was Tuolo who started it and finishing it with Mr. Smith from Atlanta. Well, tomorrow on Fox, it's the new series that critics are calling TV's next big adventure. From the mind and mouth of Eddie Murphy comes a groundbreaking new show. Catch the series premiere of the PJs tomorrow at 8.30, 7.30 Central after an all-new Simpsons right here on Fox. And the secondary made like the PJs right yes. there. Took everybody out of coverage and forced Young to have to scramble. First time he's been sacked today. Second and 11. The give is to Kirby. And Terry Kirby picking up about four. Time running out. Less than a half a minute to go in the third quarter. This is the best personnel group. And we've said this all season long uh, for the San Francisco 49ers. But without that man... Garrison Hurst, it's you can it's easier to defend. It's kind of like when Barry Sanders is sitting back there. There's a threat every time to carry, carry the football. Now, as we close this third quarter, those three wide receivers have to work a little harder because the running game is not there. No question about it. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Falcons 17, the 49ers 10. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after a word from your local Fox station. From the mind and mouth of Eddie Murphy comes the PJs, world premiere tomorrow. Ah, the possibilities Dodge Caravan opens up. It's a cabin in the woods, complete with heated power recliners. It's your own private ski lodge, or your workshop for building one. It's your place in the sun, complete with guest room and breezeway. Dodge Caravan, the world's most popular home away from home. Now get a thousand cash allowance or 1.9 financing on Caravan. It seems obvious, really, that the people who created the nation's first fiber optic network would be the ones making wireless clearer. Sprint PCS. We built the only all-digital nationwide network from the ground up for a new level of clarity. It's the clear alternative to cellular. Or maybe you've already heard. We care about what we do. Make sure everything is just right. We're proud to have our name on our work. That's what Jiffy Lube Signature Service is all about. Jiffy Lube Signature Service. Our name is on the line, and we offer Pennzoil. Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana's favorite oil jade. Home Improvement, weeknights at 5 on Fox Chicago. Falcons scoring in each of the first three quarters led 14 to nothing. The 49ers came back to 14 to 10, but the field goal gives them a one touchdown lead as we start the fourth quarter. Dick Stockton, Matt Millen, Pam Oliver here at the Georgia Dome. Third down and six for the 49ers. Steve Young's pass wide open is Jerry Rice. And Jerry Rice being chased by Booker pushes him out of bounds in Falcon territory. And a huge gain. And the 49ers have plenty of time.
to dream that one up in a gain of 38. Time was the key. Young had lots of time to throw, and because of that time, he's able to work and find this downfield. Just sitting right in the middle of the field, there was nobody there. Watch the block right there. Boom. J.J. Stokes peels back on Ray Buchanan. <laughs> Little shoulder to the face. Three catches for 63 yards and a touchdown for Jerry Rice today. Far cry from last Sunday's wild card. First down, and the pass is intercepted. William White. William White, the strong safety, returns it, and Steve Young with his second interception. A late flag goes down. And both of the interceptions thrown by Steve Young were, might say, really Aaron throws. Flag after the play, so the interception will go. The first one he forced to there was, he must not have seen that free safety. Ball, unnecessary roughness, number 83. The unnecessary roughness against the 49ers will be tacked on to the return of William first White. Down. The second one, the second interception, looks like he knew where he wanted to go. Watch the go at the play action to draw everybody up inside, and now he's going to throw it back. But he was expecting Clark to come over more. And Clark never cleared because Jesse Tuggle, who had bitten on that play action, was able to get back, which made him have to force to the other side. Watch Tuggle. Tuggle's right here. See, he expected him to come more to the left. And when it didn't happen, it was the Aaron throw you talked about. Both teams have capitalized on turnovers. Falcons will try here. First down at the 36. Throwing on first down, a pump fake going underneath to Kozlowski, the fullback who replaced Bob Christian, who tore his ACL, and a very valuable performer, as Matt said, that his choice is the top fullback in the NFL this year, and Kozlowski uh, doing a good job in the final two regular season games. And not enough is talked about of the relationship between a fullback and that running back, especially especially Jamal Anderson really relies on his fullback to see things he doesn't and particularly the blockers when they come clean second down and nine after the one yard pickup on the delay Jamal Anderson and he gets wrapped up in a hurry picks up one yard bringing up third and long well tomorrow the Cardinals and the Vikings the pregame show begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, as the Cardinals, who upset the Dallas Cowboys, this is going to be a bigger hurdle, the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, like real, really high. And what, there's Bob Christian, the fullback. But what happens? Um, Minnesota does so many things. They essentially run the same offense as the 49ers with that three wide receivers. Robert Smith is the X factor. And then the speed of Randy Moss really throws things into a tizzy. Speaking of speed, Tim Dwight, number 83, and is a third wide receiver on third down and eight. Good pickup on the blitz again, and the pass is caught by Tony Martin, first down. And once again, the Falcons doing the job, picking up the blitzes by the 49ers. Darnell Walker on the stop, a gain of 16. Dick, now this is what is a complete player, because you saw the 100-yard rushing effort of Jamal Anderson. But when Tim McDonald comes clean, he's got to be blocked, and Jamal Anderson cleans that block. And because of that time, he's able to throw that kind of a fade stop back underneath outside to Mathis. Mark Martin now with four catches for Martin, 53 rather, yards. Well, both of those guys, the m, &M boys, have provided big production this year. First down on the 18. Jamal Anderson running right into Marquez Pope. And maybe a yard, that's all. Ooh, Jamal Anderson's mad about something. He's yelling at Calvin Collins, that left guard. He's saying, look, you get your rear end over there because I have to read off of you. You're seeing a lot of uh, players with a short fuse well, today. Well, you know, that's to echo what Howie Long was talking about at halftime. There's a lot at stake. You know, in a call that happened like in the first half, that kind of spills over because what you're really dealing with is your, it's what you play the game for. It's your lifeblood. Loser goes home. The winner gets to the NFC Championship game next Sunday. Second down and eight. Draw play 
Jamal Anderson gets to the 15 and they don't have to gain a lot of yards every time they show run because it does set up play action and it has all year for the Falcons it'll give Jamal Anderson 103 yards rushing in 23 carries so Anderson at 100 yards 12 in a row including the last five in the regular season goes over 100 today you know and Dan Reeves also is looking at the scoreboard and he sees that it's 17 10 and it just a field goal is a two score game third down and seven from the 15. to Martin and Marquez Pope. That was not a good throw. Might have had a great chance to intercept it. He broke it up, intended for Tony Martin, and that throw was a line drive under thrown pass. You know, that, that kind of that fade stop has to be thrown, so the defender cannot be right. But this was thrown so much on a line that Pope had a chance. And had he not been able to look to the side, he saw the matchup that he wanted. Had he had the wherewithal to see the field, which is tough because that's a predetermined play, Santiago was wide open. So Morton Anderson, who kicked a 29-yarder in the third quarter, now will attempt a field goal from 32 yards. Krasinski, the holder, and the kick is good. And as Matt mentioned, it's now a two-score game for the Falcons. And it's 20 to 10 in favor of Atlanta. And tropical splash. Yeah. Have you tried Mondo Mango? Um, what's it taste like? Mango. Well, I've never had mango. But if I don't like mango, have you tried Mondo? To some, a scented cardboard cutout is simply no substitute for the genuine article. The freshly updated 1999 Toyota 4Runner. I'm a music major. It's tough. I mean, you go away from home, and I really wanted to do well. So what I really needed was a big screen notebook with DVD. But I couldn't find the right one. My roommate told me that I could get Dell on the internet. Dell built a notebook just for me. I got right online and found answers to a million questions. It's a pretty weird hours. They're making me look way too smart. Be direct. Dell. Dell computers use Intel Pentium 2 processors. Will someone cue to music? Louie, what are you doing? <clears throat> My family has been in this swamp Louis. for over 5,000 years. Louie, I'm begging you. During Prohibition, when the swamp ran dry, my family pulled together. My great-grandfather, the worm master. Louie, that's enough. And my grandfather, the fly master. That's enough, Louie. Gathered up the flies and the worms to be saved and handed down that brilliant tradition to me, Louie. Oh, Louie, you're begging for a pink slip. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Toyota. Get the most out of your day every day. By Dell Computers, direct computer solutions for business at home and around the world. Be direct, Dell. By Budweiser, now's the perfect time to enjoy a fresh, cold, Beechwood-aged Budweiser. And by Nike and the Nike Alpha Project. The Atlanta Falcons seem to have stopped the surge of the 49ers. Where early in the fourth quarter, they lead 20 to 10, and Morton Anderson kicking off to R.W. McQuarters deep in the end zone. And he'll run it out from about four yards. And McQuarters again is stopped. Falcons have done a brilliant job in special teams coverage, and that time it was the rookie from Florida, Elijah Williams, with the play. thousand United employees are doing what they can to make air travel better. Rising is performance. Now that is a sweet investment. You have a retirement plan? Oh, sure. Invest, get rich, retire at 45. Well, I'm 58. Huh? Oh, 
your retirement plan. Who's looking out for your investments? E-Trade, the number one rated place to invest online. With free real-time quotes, ten times more research, smart alerts, all from $14.95. Isn't it time you looked out for number one? Call 1-800-E-Trade-1 and see why someday we'll all invest this way. Murphy, I want you to pick my wife up from the airport. Her name is Thelma. I'm Thelma. Really? Really. Camry's extra value package with CD player and six speakers and a power driver's seat. Thanks for the ride. No problem, Mrs. Burns. Who's Mrs. Burns? Did we mention anti-lock brakes? Thank you. The 1999 Camry. At least the road will be smooth. Some guys. Does that look like a man who can control the weather? You should never make angry. The X-Files, an all-new episode tomorrow on Fox. Dan Reeves, who was named the Coach of the Year this week, the winningest active coach in the National Football League, underwent bypass surgery on December 14th, and he shows no indications of fatigue as he coaches for the first time on the sidelines since his surgery. First down from the 13, and the swing pass goes out to Terry Kirby, and Cornelius Bennett carries him to the sideline and a gain of three yards. The 49ers have never come back to win a playoff game from a deficit larger than seven points. They trail by ten with nearly five minutes gone by here in the fourth. But are they capable? The answer is a resounding yes. And are they going to be able to run to do it? No. Ten minutes now. They've got to be able to throw to win this football game. Second and seven, they run it with Kirby, and Kirby gets a couple, will bring up third down at about five and six yards. Well, let's take a step back and look at the last two possessions for the 49ers, and they have been interceptions and not pretty throws at all by Steve Young, as Eugene Robinson and then William White, the two safeties, had picks. Robinson running it back 77 yards. Yeah, the first one to Robinson, I, that was a bad decision. The second one, I could see what he was looking at. He was expecting Clark to keep on coming, and it didn't happen. Third and five. Young has Terrell Owens, and Owens gets the first down of the 25-yard line, his seventh catch of the game. And 71 yards receiving on the day. Dick, well done by Terrell Owens. And what happens as you come across in motion, you know your defender is sitting to the inside. And they become too high on top of you, which is what Eugene Robinson does. See, then you take it back inside. They're streaming to the ball this way. What you have to do when you get out there is you have to have communication and hold the inside. No drops for Owens today. And Jerry Rice not on the field right now. First and 10 at the 25. And Steve Young, nowhere to go, will run out of bounds. You know who can still run? I mean, Steve Young can still run, but Cornelius Bennett has never lost a step. When he came into the league, he was a pure speed player. You may not lose a step, but you can lose your lungs. <laughs> I believe he's called for oxygen right about now. Cornelius Bennett has played in more postseason games than any of the Falcons, 17. Of course, he was with the Buffalo Bills, who went to four Super Bowls. Eugene Robinson right behind. Second and five for the 49ers on their 30. And the give is to Mark Edwards, the fullback, who barrels his way close to the first down at the 35. If he doesn't make it, he's with about a half a yard shy as Jerry Rice sitting this one out on this series. Mark Edwards showed you last week in a phenomenal play shaking off the tackle of Leroy Butler here comes right what it really what really takes to play it, you know because this all this turns into is one two there's the hit shake it off shake off another one and then get the first down that was such a key play in last week's game hey man it may have been the biggest play in that drive and the uh, you saw Jerry Rice come out of the field and the Falcons have called a timeout so both the 49ers and Falcons have one timeout used here in the second half. 7.35 remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back.
French, German. You're the genius behind the new Speak in a Week foreign language CDs. But can you say global distribution? You know linguistics, not logistics. Entree UPS. The same people you rely on here clear customs electronically and deliver to over 200 countries worldwide. Soon orders are rolling in and everyone speaking your language. Bonjour. <laughs> UPS, moving at the speed of business. The executives are at the gate. Around the first turn. That's Bill Williams leading Miss Kelly Mack on the outside. And Jane Carlson. As they pass the car rental counters, Kelly Mack has to stop to fill out paperwork. Now it's Jane Carlson and Bill Williams neck and neck. Bill has to leave the airport to get his car, but Jane's car is right there at Hertz number one Club Gold. The trunk is open, the keys are in it. It's Jane Carlson and Hertz number one Club Gold. Exactly. Come on. Nothing. Whew. Monkey cage. I don't see any monkey. No, oh, there's an animal. All right, let's go home. Happy? It's every man's fantasy. Oh, that's disgusting. But can these two keep it a secret? You were saying? Depends on what you heard. An all-new Ali McBeal, Fox Monday. Falcons call the timeout, and the 49ers having to play this entire game without their major running threat, Garrison Hurst, who broke his left fibula on the first play from scrimmage. Third down and one, two tight ends, Clark and Irv Smith line up. And the first down as Perry Kirby dives for the necessary yardage. One part of the game plan that the Falcons wanted to do was to get some hits on Steve Young, and they haven't been able to do that. And I think that the 49er offensive line has done a pretty good job protecting him. Now, what hasn't happened is the receivers at times have not been able to get open, particularly in the red zone. But this offensive line has done a pretty solid job of protecting Steve Young. That was the first rushing first down for the 49ers, which uh, again goes to Garrison Hersaxons. Four wide receivers on the 36-yard line. Steve Young completes it to Terrell Owens, and a minimal gain on the play. Randy Fuller, who who played in the Super Bowl and Super Bowl 30 with the Pittsburgh Steelers quickly in, limiting Owens to a gain of five. That's a solid tackle by Fuller, because Owens is a presence out there physically. You get one-on-one -on -one outside when he has a chance to uh, to use his strength, and he's, he's impressive. But watch Fuller as he comes through and then follows up. Tied the legs up, kind of hog-tied and put him down. Second and six. Young gets the completion to J.J. Stokes, and it'll be a 49er first down at the 48-yard line, and this is the kind of a team that can pick you apart with the short stuff, and as we wind down to six minutes to go again, the 49ers need two scores to get even or win. Patience. Patience is the key. I've noticed that the 49ers' pace is picked up, and at the five, the six-minute mark, they're going to have to do that even more so. But patience by its, the Atlanta Falcons defense to let them work it down the field. Ninth play of this drive, and Young goes underneath to Mark Edwards. There's that attitude. gain of two and a crunching hit by Jesse Tuggle. And there's the attitude I was talking about. Jesse Tuggle, who's, who sometimes has blinders in coverage, doesn't see the whole field. But when you drop him in that underneath and just let him things develop in front of you, then you see it, and boy, I'll tell you, when you have these hits, you just light up from the inside out. He just ran right through Edwards. Heck, he got himself an official on the way, too. <laughs> That's a bonus. <laughs> That's right. A couple extra points. Well, he's all right. Second down and eight from the 49. Steve Young. And he goes down about three yards shy of the first down. That, that was a very was, smart play. That by was him. a curly moment <laughs> if I saw one. That was the most pathetic slide I've ever seen. He just kind of got in there. Right at the end, he just gave a couple of... <laughs> Look at this. Nice facial expressions. Gets to the end. Now, if this isn't out of the Three Stooges, <laughs> nothing is. 360, and he did it for you, I bet. <laughs> ah, boy, I love the Stooges. Ellie, 49ers now face a third and four. 
They have converted four of five on third downs here in the second half. Young, and he's got a wide open J.J. Stokes. And Stokes inside the 20-yard line. Still on his feet and a big play for the 49ers. As we wind down to four minutes, that's a 33-yard pickup on the slam. No, a 33-yard pick. I want you to watch how it works. They're going to pick Michael Booker. Excellent job of, of the inside receiver, the slot receiver, of making sure he's going to bump him off. And it's Terrell Owens. See, all you have to do is make it look like the defender is pushing you. But you are really trying to bump off, which, of course, is illegal in this league unless it's called. 49ers now with a first down on the 12-yard line of the Falcons, and Steve Young dumps it off to Kirby, and Kirby gets inside the 10, gain of about four yards on the play. Cornelius Bennett on the stop, and now with three and a half minutes to go, Young, who's the masterful seven for seven on this drive, 49ers need two scores. Dick, that was an excellent job of play calling on that pick play. And it, when you're not getting the coverage, or when you're getting great coverage down the field, you have to create separation, and that's a great way to do it. Second and six. Owens in motion to the left. And Young is going to run it, and Young will score. Touchdown, San Francisco. A flag is down in the end zone, however. Steve Young saw the opening and ran into the corner for the touchdown with 2.57 remaining in the fourth quarter. A flag down in the end zone on the opposite side. And it appears to be against the Falcons. They are lining up Wade Ritchie for the extra point. It'll be declined, obviously. Good job by Young of looking down the field. Once he saw his coverage, there is no then he let his legs take over. The, field. the player got off the field. There is no foul. And they picked it up. There was no foul. The player got off the field in time. That was Cornelius Bennett getting off because he was kind of hobbled. So now Richie with 2.57 to go to try to bring the 49ers to within three. Here comes play. Big Denver. difference in the game here. And the pass caught for the two-point conversion. Greg Clark. So now the yes. 49ers are within a field goal of winning the game. It's the second time I've seen Detmer this season make a great play on a bad snap. Earlier he did it against New England, and now he does it here. Here is the touchdown run by Steve Young. And the two-point conversion to Clark thrown by Detmer. And it's a 20-18 game. Great presence by Ty Detmer and a nice throw to Clark inside in coverage. Dan Henry Hansen lives in Lusk, Wyoming. When I grow up, I want to be a rancher. He taught his dad how to use Microsoft Excel spreadsheets to manage cattle. One thing my dad's taught me is not to be afraid change. Technology is helping the Hansons ensure that their ranch will still be here when Dan Henry is ready to inherit it. I always heard that if you have the job you have fun doing, do that for life. Did you know you can get a six-cylinder Nissan Frontier for less than the cost of a four-cylinder Tacoma? Think about it. That's like getting 170 horsepower, but only paying for 150. Or like getting two and a half tons of towing capacity, but only paying for a ton and three quarters. Amazing how they do that. The V6 Nissan Frontier. Ranked best compact pickup in initial quality by J.D. Power and Associates. Mm. Oh. <laughs> On Super Bowl Sunday, you'll discover signs of intelligent life in auto insurance. Be progressive. Call 1-800-AUTO-PRO. And remember... Back up. Snap from Randy Kirk uh, turned into a two-point conversion that gives the 49ers a chance with a field goal to win the game. 
And now they are looking for the possible onside kick. Now, I don't I don't understand if they do that. I think this has to be a fake and they'll run everybody back to the other side. There's a scoring drive and Steve Young was masterful on that drive. Ran for the touchdown, but the Falcons have to be careful for it just in case. They've got Jamal Anderson and a lot of their good hands people up front. And uh, a line drive kick. Tim Dwight is back there and oh, goes boy. out of bounds. What a, a mistake break for the that Falcons. Is. Major mistake comes out to the 40 yard line. That reminds me of the Packers game on Monday night. Yes. Yeah, they 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 blew that also. They were trying to kick and and try a pooch kick, but they have no idea where it came and from. Ryan Longwell kicked it out of bounds. Right. That is exactly with the 49ers who have been clawing themselves back in. Look at Richie's reaction. Oh, he knows it. They've been clawing themselves back in. They did not want to give them field position. Worst case scenario just occurred for the 49ers. Look at that look. He knows it too. And the Falcons have the ball on their 40. First down with 2.51 remaining. Leading by two. No surprise. Jamal Anderson going outside and stays in bounds after picking up four yards. Merton Hanks chased him down. Two timeouts for both teams. The key right now is not necessarily the timeouts. It's the field position for the Atlanta Falcons. They want to keep on gaining ground. And at one point, they're going to have to force San Francisco to use their timeouts, something that the Packers did not do last week. And remember, if the Falcons get just three points, a field goal, that'll force the 49ers to get need the touchdown right. to win. Second down and six on the 44. Again, Jamal Anderson. And he's trying to reach for extra yards. It'll be third down at about three or four as we wind down to our two-minute warning. 1.59 on the clock. We'll be back. Look at the breath let out by Dan Reeves. You can't blame him. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff is brought to you by Foster's, Australian for beer. How to speak Australian. Referee. Beer. Foster's Australian for beer. Of these leading cereals, only one is made with 100% whole grain. Only Wheaties. Whole grain makes the difference. And 100% whole grain makes it Wheaties. Let me tell you about the best traffic report in town, brought to you by QXRT's Barb and Bill. Woo! It's a scorcher out there, and I hope none of you are trying to get anywhere soon. From up here, it looks like a little backup heading downtown. These guys have the ultimate view. This is Barb and Bill, the QXRT the traffic team, signing out. Once again, our explorer saves the day. Yeah, glad we're not down in that mess. And just think of the money they saved on a helicopter. The new Ford Explorer, built Ford Tough. Men who have battled as brothers through combat thick and thin confront each other for a prize only one can win. Some guys. Does that look like a man who can control the weather? You should never make angry. The X Files, an all new episode tomorrow on Fox. Two minute warning, and there's Wade Ritchie, whose kickoff went out of bounds, giving the Falcons good field position, but setting up now a crucial third down and three on the Atlanta 47. Ah, this is what it's all about. That's why you play these games. You're pacing on one sideline. You're anticipating on the other sideline and in the middle, in the green, between the lines, it's all about pride. And they're going to give it to Jamal Anderson. First down for the Falcons. Anderson 
with 116 yards today and two touchdowns and a critical blow to the 49er hopes. Oh, that was a shot to the head from Tyson. Watch him inside. Again, assignment oriented. Everybody on somebody, then use the vision to bounce outside. And an excellent job by Terrence Mathis. Watch the eyes of Jamal Anderson. His eyes are the key because they'll take him to the hole and his feet and legs will do the rest. And the 49ers use their second time out and there is Dan Reeves and uh, tell you what, they've, they're testing his uh, heart unquestionably today and the Falcons trying to get closer to a victory leading by two. Now Dick, that was important for a number of reasons. They just forced San Francisco to use a timeout. Now they have one more left. So if Atlanta's going to win, it's back to the same stuff and grind it and make them use another timeout. And that is so important because if and when the 49ers get the ball back, they have no timeouts now to go the length of the field. And they uh, right. managed to uh, do that against the Green Bay Packers last week to win the wild card in dramatic fashion. So what San Francisco has to do now is stop them right here, use the other timeout, and then... You'd have second and third. They're going to get the ball back with not very much time, but they have to stop them now. Three tight ends for the Falcons. And again, Jamal Anderson. And the 49ers timeout right calling here. the timeout with right. 140 on the clock. So that is the final timeout by the 49ers. Well, tomorrow, Homer Simpson gets hitched in Vegas on an all-new Simpson. Then from the mind and mouth of Eddie Murphy comes a groundbreaking new series. Catch the world premiere of the PJs, followed by an all-new X-Files. It all starts tomorrow at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Dick, there's 100 seconds left in this game. You can use up about 80 to 90 before you punt the football. Actually, a little more. How many miracles does Steve Young have left? Of course, a big one last week, beating the Packers. Short week for Steve Mariucci's 49ers after that emotional win over a team they hadn't beaten in a long time. Facing the Falcons who had a week's rest and going into their domain, the artificial surface of the Georgia Dome. Second down and nine. and he'll cover up in a hurry and they can't stop the clock the loss of two yards on the play Brinson Buckner in on the stop so the 40 second clock is down to 35 so you're going to be under the one minute mark and you'll have your third down and then another 40 seconds you're going to get that thing back with the punt it's going to depend you're not going to be much time maybe under 10 seconds and that may not be enough obviously with no timeouts remaining as the Falcons Nearly a minute away from a franchise record 10th straight victory. They won their last nine in the regular season, looking to get into the NFC Championship game. They've got to snap the ball down with about three or two seconds. And they do it with one second on the clock, and the pitch goes to Anderson. And, bounds. and oh, he goes out of bounds, very, and it stops the clock. Dumb. That is impossible. 49 seconds impossible. to go. The same presence that he had to dive in for the touchdown. He knows it, too. Escaped him. You he cannot do that. Unbelievable. They stopped the clock. That's going to save the 49ers a half a minute. That's incredible. They just saved themselves 40 seconds. It's 49 seconds on the clock. They'd have had it at the lead, at the most, with nine seconds left. Steve? That is terrible job of knowing what's going on in the field. Especially from Jamal Anderson who's been a heady player throughout. Dan Straczynski punting on fourth down. 49ers coming in to try to block it. R.W. McQuarters on the 11-yard line, giving ground. And oh, it goes inside play. the five-yard line. Ben Telly. It was Ben Telly with a critical play on special teams. Wow. And they very nearly blocked the punt, Max. Straczynski just got it off in time. Late, if he would had Lance Schulters, I believe that's 30, had he laid out, he had himself a chance. No, it could have been Schulters. He's on the other end. Darnell Walker, 38. Then R.W. McQuarters tried to make a big play. 
because everybody was trying to block up front. So he tried to take it the other way, and in fact, it went opposite for him. 38 so, seconds is more than enough time. And no timeouts for Steve Young, and they need a field goal. Got to get in field goal range. Yeah, that, <laughs> that football is not the right one to use in this game. Jerry Mark Bright, who is retiring after a 25-year brilliant career as an NFL official. This will be his last game of his career, retiring after this game. And has been an outstanding official for the league. Ball is at the four-yard line. Young back in his end zone. And the pass thrown down, intended for Owens, but it bounced well in front of him, and now the clock shows 33 seconds. Steve Young is familiar with fourth quarter comebacks. He has brought his team back 11 times in his career. But this one, well, I'll tell you one, this one has got to be as tough as he's ever faced, Matt, with no timeouts left and having to get into field goal range, but the Falcons playing their people way back. Well, but they're not going to let him get off the line of scrimmage without E, without, like Packers did last week. That's going to go against San Francisco. It looked like the right side moved. Kirk Strafford, their right offensive tackle, had a little bit of a lean going backwards. That'll be half the distance. Prior to the snap, false start, 66 offense. Kevin Gogan also on that right goal. side. Both of them got the lean going backwards. So they'll bring it back to the two-yard line. Second down and 12. Hey, Wade Ritchie would like a chance to redeem himself. So would Jamal Anderson. Although that won't happen. Young back in the end zone again, and the pass is caught to the 27 by Chuck Levy, and that's the second time Young has found Levy out of the backfield, and the hurry up goes on. 20 seconds and running. Stop the clock. That's good. 18 seconds. Look, they had a miracle last week against the Green Bay Packers when Young did not have a particularly great game but had an awesome throw for the last offensive play of the game. And that spe spelled victory for the 49ers. Now, with 18 seconds left, he's got to effectively go 10, 20, 30, about 40 yards, 45. But you know, Matt, if he throws a pass... 20 yards and they run right he's going to have to run up to the ball well, with the clock running now it's interesting how the falcons will defend him don't let those receivers run clean they're playing three deep and they're going to bump the receiver and a three-man rush young gets away from trouble and the pass is knocked away by buchanan ray buchanan deflected that ball it was intended i believe for jerry rice yeah, and elijah williams did the nice job of shadowing underneath you know that I'm telling I'm having a deja vu to last week. Craig Newsom had a chance for a pick yes, and missed it. Yeah. Watch the ball. Uh, Williams underneath, beautifully done. And then he bats it away. Buchanan had a chance at the interception. 11 seconds left. Well, they are blanketing the wide receivers here. That was Buchanan who came over from the Colts. Third down and 10. 11 seconds. No timeouts for the 49ers. And Rice looking and trying to buy time, and this one may be picked off, and it is. Eugene, Eugene Robinson is second. In any event, it's over for the 49ers. Seal gets credit for that interception. Well, they're still fighting for it. William White was around the ball as well. And the game is over. The, Fuller was also there. The Atlanta Falcons have defeated the San Francisco 49ers and advanced to the NFC Championship game for the first time in team history, responding to Dan Reeves, who accepts congratulations at midfield as the Falcons, now won 10 in a row, remain undefeated at home, and will face the winner of the Viking Cardinal game to be played tomorrow. Right now, let's go down to Pam Oliver.
All right, thanks a lot, Dick. Dan, tell me about this. You're going to the NFC Championship game. Well, it's unbelievable, Pam. I mean, the whole year's been incredible. You got to give credit to our players. You know, I can't say enough about what a good bunch of guys, but also good football players that have really sacrificed. And to get to this point is certainly beyond our wildest dreams, but we've got a chance now, an opportunity. We just got to take it to the next step. What an emotional game this must have been for you. May I ask you respectfully how you're feeling? Well, I feel great. You know, I can't holler as loud as I would like to, but I feel great. It's great to go to the next round. All right, thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate it. Let's go back up to Dick. What a miraculous turnaround from a 3-13 and 13 team two years ago. They have won 21 of their last 25 games to go to the championship game. Matt, here is the last play of the game as time ran out. From the expression on Young's face, knowing what he had to do, throw it up, and then watch it come down. William White, William White is the one who ends up with it. Yes, he does. His second interception of the game, and Steve Mariucci saw the miracle season end after beating Green Bay last Sunday. It comes to a halt in the divisional game. Dan Reeves, knowing that they're going to the next step and feeling good about it. Really Jamal, yep. Phenomenal, phenomenal game and phenomenal season, but it's not done yet. No, uh, Dan Reeves, he's not satisfied getting to this point. He said the next level, and that will be the NFC Championship game next Sunday against the Vikings or the Cardinals. Jamal Anderson, a playoff record for the Falcons, 113 yards and two touchdowns and we've got the post game show coming up so for Matt Millen and Pam Oliver this is Dick Stockton at the Georgia Dome the final score the Falcons 20 the 49ers 18 and we'll send you to the post game show with JB Terry Howie and Chris after these messages